order on uh, project number 177, page 16. On the procedure today, we will uh, have Jerry do his, his presentation. We'll open it up to the board for questions. And then we'll open it up to landowners. We'd like you to state your name for the record and make sure everyone is signed in out there. And then we'll put the viewers on second and we'll do the same procedure. And uh, we'll go from there and see where it all goes. So, uh, Jerry, are you prepared? Yes, okay. Somewhere in between time here, when we get them done, then Myron gets to read this long love letter from the Minnesota Department of right. all that stuff. We'll fit that in. Good stuff. <coughs> Uh, this is, uh, I'm Jerry Cordula. I'm a civil engineer and I own Cordula Engineering. And this is my son Nick. He is my partner and my uh, helper on the project. We work together on developing uh, a set of plans that we're going to be presenting today. Um, the drain we're talking about is where the red line is on the map. Um, and I think if some of you folks went to, have been to the, the preliminary meeting, uh, it's going to sound like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but it, it pretty much, uh, uh, what's, what I'm presenting today is called a detailed engineering report, which is, is supposed to be a little more refined than the preliminary, and it, it, it addresses some of the concerns that were brought up at the original meeting. But the drain is, um, this is a St. Hilaire Road, this is what we, we typically call uh, the churches. The, the ditch will be one mile um, north of the St. Hilaire Road, and it is nine miles long. If you, want to, if you can zoom in, Nick, right here. Um, this is the outlet, and um, it crosses over Highway 220, and then it, it follows along the west side of the highway a short distance, and then it, it it outlets into the Grand Marais um, at a natural um, swale there. So what I'll do is I'll go through and explain what the drain will look like if you own land adjacent to it. Um, we'll start out in the first two miles. So zoom out just a little bit. Um, there you go. Um, the first two miles from Highway uh, 220 uh, this is where Vern um, uh, Johnson used to live. Um, the, the end slopes, we, we call them the end slopes, but that's the slope from the edge of the road down to the bottom will be a 5 to 1 um, slope. Uh, there will be a 10 foot bottom and there will be a 5 to 1 back slope. So the ditch is going to look um, a lot like um, um, probably the Tabor Road ditch, maybe if, 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 you've, if you've seen that's a recent constructed ditch with, that has uh, uh, slopes that are pretty mild. Um, and the, one of the reasons we're, we're it's going to require quite a bit of right-of-way in that uh, first two miles because the ditch is going to be fairly deep. And I'll have to explain to you why it's going to be deep is, um, zoom out Nick a little bit. <laughs> um, the first, the first five miles of the drain uh, will have a drop. The ditch bottom drop will drop three feet per mile. <coughs> Beyond that, the the last four miles will have a four to one, a four foot drop per mile. And the reason there's more drop out there is just because God made it that way and we're following the lay of the land. So when we get down to this point, zoom in Nick, with that kind of drop, the ditch gets to be fairly deep. Um, deep in a, in a perception would be if you, if you look at ditch, you don't make a very good window. I can't see through you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you, it'll, um, so the, the reason we have those mild side slopes is because if you ever been a mile to the north and looked at ditch two, you, it's, it's caving in a lot. And it, we're trying to um, prevent that from happening. Uh, so the only way you can try to prevent that is to have a much less slope. Um, when you get a ditch that deep, um, which would be on the order of 14 feet below Highway 220, 
Uh, you get below the water table in the field, you get in that seven to eight feet below the lay of the land. Once you get the bottom of the ditch below the water table, the tendency is the, the, the side slopes want to slump in because the water table is intersecting the bottom, the side slopes of the ditch. When you have a ditch that has milder side slopes, and it doesn't pan out the way you really want, you have a little bit of a, 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 a chance to recover. In other words, if it starts to slump, you can go down and fix the bottom to a four to one, and it would look much like what some people call a bench side slope. So um, the ditch will, will have um, very mild side slopes in the first two miles. The next two miles, uh, this is where Gordy Threen used to live. Um, this is George Kovar's yard, uh, Kurt Threen. The ditch in the next two miles will have a five to one uh, end slope and a four to one back slope. Right about here is where our ditch starts to get, it's going to look a lot different than there. It's going to look a lot shallower and it's because we're, we're hitting a flat area here that we're trying to bring the water through. So uh, we don't need, we'll, we won't be getting close to the water table. Uh, we still want to be able to have a ditch that's um, mobile, manageable, and the water board can, uh, the watershed district will mow it. One thing I'll say, the whole ditch has a 10-foot bottom. So no matter where your land is, it will have a 10-foot bottom. Once we get past these two miles, um, this is where, uh, this is County Road 66. Um, the rest of the way, the ditch has a four to one end slope and a four to one back slope. And so, and that will be carried through uh, to the end, Nick. And uh, to put in some perspective of where the ditch will start, um, I think you folks know where, where Frank Berta lives. This is Geese's. Um, so there's an existing culvert through the road right here now, and that will stay as is and what it is. So we won't be uh, we won't be funneling any more water through uh, from the beginning than there already is. So that's what the ditch will will look like, and and then I'll talk a little bit about why it needs to look like that. It, uh, we, we, our standard of, of uh, agricultural drains, uh, the new ones we build, is called a 10-year design. Um, so what the water, um, the water folks want to do is they want to have some sort of consistency so that all new drains are, are have designed to fairly the same degree of service. And so when we say it's a 10-year ditch, uh, that is a drain that you probably will, um, it, it hits the point where the cost is not greater than the benefits. In other words, if you, if you have a much better drain, the cost goes so high that you can't justify building because we don't, we don't spend money on, on building things that, that, that aren't, don't make sense. And you have to realize enough benefits. Uh, so. Um, and that number, that 10-year design is, 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 is kind of accepted by all the watersheds in the area. And what that means to you is, you know, theoretically, um, you have a 10% chance every year of the drain being too small. Or you can say it another way, once every 10 years you can expect the drain to, to be uh, not big enough. But that's no guarantee. A 10-year ditch can go 20 years without ever overflowing. It's, 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 it's just the incremental. Every year you have a 10% chance that you're going to have a rainfall that's going to surpass what the engineers predict that the capability of the ditch will handle. And typically in, in rainfall events, um, if you have a 2-inch rain in a 24-hour period, uh, that is considered um, a 10-year rainfall event in, uh, in this area. So as time goes by, um, 
the ditch starts to perform a little more poorly once it, you got two inches every day. So it, and, and typically, if you have a rainfall, you get two inches every every week. In other words, you have some lag time in between the rainfall events. Uh, the ditch will perform <coughs> fine through a, through a long period of time. But if if you have a period like 2016 which uh, it rained and rained and rained every other day and rained in two inches and you know there wasn't too many drains that were able to uh, to funnel that water through the system so um, that being said um, it's a typical uh, farm ditch uh, it is a ditch that is located in an area where there um, I think you could probably go all the way to climax to uh, Highway 220, uh, where the Pritz Corner is, and you'll, there's, there, there's, there's a county or a watershed ditch every mile except here. So it, it's one of the last places where um, there's not a legal drain um, or you know, either county or watershed ditch that has been, uh, been built. Um, and so I guess I don't want to get long-winded because I think there's a lot of people that want to talk about uh, why things are the way they are. But um, I want to, after I get done, which I'm very close to now, um, in the process of getting permits, um, the watershed through the engineer has to get some permits from the DNR and we have to get permits. Um, we have comments for Bowser. So the next thing on the agenda is is, is those things. That, and what I'll do is I'll kind of do a um, a preemptive strike so that you know um, I'll, I'll 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 present um, what the DNR concerns were, um, and they basically said that the plan is acceptable, uh, but we need to address a few things. And uh, we tried to address them last fall, but we weren't able to because of the snow cover. We need to do a wetland. Um, we need to do, zoom in there. We need to do, um, hire some folks to do a wetland inventory. Uh, where we have fit in here, even though we're getting very, just inching into the moraine, we have to delineate the wetland. And then we also have to pull over there. We have to do. Um, we have to hire some archaeologists. Uh, archaeologists. Archaeologists. <laughs> yes. Uh, to go out there and see if they can find some artifacts. <laughs> and uh, they won't do that uh, when there's snow on the ground. So that is um, that is something that we are lacking now but we intend to fully do here in the next um, short time, a couple of weeks maybe. Um, all their other concerns are kind of, uh, um, you know, we're supposed to plant, uh, um, we're supposed to avoid entangling wet, uh, wildlife and use the right kind of herbicides. So that was the easy one. The hard one to address is, it's called Bowser, it's the board that oversees all watershed uh, districts in Minnesota and they have, uh, they have uh, I think it's statutory, they have the requirement to comment on um, the engineering, um, engineering on a project. Um, and typically they get two whacks at you, they got one after the preliminary report I gave them and then they get a second chance to look at uh, after we we tried to fix all their concerns and we look at it again, uh, what happened to us on this project is we didn't get comments from the same individual. We got so we got two new guys that are dying to comment, and uh, they so we were thoroughly uh, um, <coughs> helped out. Uh, all their comments are meant to be uh, uh, beneficial to you folks, so that you're getting a. Um, addressing all the concerns that uh, that all uh, that everybody in Minnesota is concerned with, and and, and, and some of them are, are probably don't have much to do with farming. But I'll go through their comments really quick because I think it's going to be have to be read into the record, and it, it'll it'll kind of 
Okay, so the DNR report has to be read into the record by statute, Bowser does not. Okay. So I'm not reading the Bowser one, and if you look at it on your sheet, you'll appreciate it because it's a lot. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna address Bowser just because I think uh, if they took the time to comment, I should respond because it, there's some very good points there. Uh, but for the most part, they questioned why we had to have the mild side slopes. And, the, and of course, in the world of... Uh, of uh, engineering, there are no guarantees, and I think they were looking for what sound logical engineering basis did you come up with on a five to one? Where did you pull that out of? And I pulled it out of my common sense, and because we know we have ditches that are very deep, just right next to it, we know what the side slopes are, and we also know that they're not. Good. I mean, they're they're sliding in. So, um, I guess my comment to you folks is is that if you if you're up, you know, it's as best as you can anticipate that we can come out. Now that means you folks in those first two miles, we're gonna we're gonna be paying a lot more damages, or we're gonna be buying more land because we need more room to get that ditch in. But basically, the difference between a four to one and a five to one size slope is um, at that depth is um, we need 15 feet more the right away. So we need seven more to get down and we need seven more to get back up. So um, I think it's not um, it's not really um, that detrimental and I think um, it'll, and that's what they they commented first. They said well uh, can you, I won't guarantee a five one will stand up either but I can guarantee it will do better than a three to one. And so the other comments is that we should uh, be cognizant of the wetland and historic surveys, which is the same thing we just commented on. Uh, they wanted to know what the economic, environmental, uh, I should elaborate on the economic and social impacts. Well, I think we're all farmers and we know what our, our, we're in the farming business and uh, Primarily, this is ag land that we need to uh, uh, to farm, and we need to be uh, very good farmers to be able to make it meet. So we need good ditches. So I don't think they were more concerned about you know are there other uses this land could be used for. I don't think anybody would volunteer for that. Um, they did address some of the things that we um, how we calculate our design. They said well. We, um, there's many ways to predict what a 10-year event is. We used a, a method that is used by a lot of engineers and a lot of watersheds. Uh, it's used up and down the valley, and it is a formula that's been derived of, um, of local engineers have formulated it. And so uh, the other way to predict a rainfall event is to use the USGS. That's you. United States Geological Survey, they have formulas that are a little more extravagant that is probably more, um, it covers an area that probably is larger than the Red River Valley, but in the particular area where, where, where you folks live, um, for example, the Tabor Road Ditch, that's, that's the formula we use. It's, 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 and it, and it, it will give you a, um, it will get you a design flow that is slightly less than the USGS method, but it is probably more realistic for what the local um, conditions are. Um, I did express some concerns in the in the final um, the detailed report on uh, overflow from County Ditch 66. And that's the drain that's coming over here. And it dumps into legal drain or county ditch two. But maybe you pull up a little bit there. 66 is a very old drain that originally um, a lot of the drains that were built prior to 66, they were constructed beyond it. And 66 was built to intercept the water and funnel it um, to, to ditch two, but it is was built at a time when um, um, the 
the expectations were a lot less. And it has a tendency to overflow at times. And when it does overflow, it brings, uh, it cascades the water over the township and county roads. And in fact, it's pretty evident that happens because County Road 66, a lot of those county roads are gravel, but they have a paved spillway. And, it, and the intent is to allow that water that can't get into ditch two to go cross country. And uh, uh, there's nothing that is going to change about that just because we build this ditch unless something happens uh, to uh, 66. They commented that our alignment uh, to the um, to the west of uh, 220, they were wondering why we picked that and why we call this a natural waterway, and I think it's pretty self-evident. But what we did in this corner is uh, <coughs> We tried to avoid a lot of the utilities that are in this corner. Unfortunately, fiber optics went through two years ago, uh, which is a very, they're very touchy about uh, messing with their stuff. So the pedestals and stuff can stay where it is. The rural water is out beyond. And it is our intent to make the project uh, as least expensive as possible. And that was the best choice. Um, so that when you, if you live north of town, and if this ditch is ever built, and you drive to town, you're going to think, something's changed here. But it's going to look different. At times, um, like now, when the marae comes up, this ditch is going to back up to Bernie Johnson's yard. It's going to back up a mile. Because that's how low we are to get down to get rid of the 10-year runoffs. So when you drive, you're going to think this is a this is a substantial drain. And when we put, we're working with the uh, MnDOT, and we've got to the point where we've got um, the permit to to install that culvert, which it will be an open cut one. The highway will be closed again, and the box culvert will be put in. And uh, the question is, uh, they question the adequacy of the outlet. So if some of you folks are here wondering what is the impact, are we going to be worse off when this ditch is going to be constructed? And uh, that's a lot easier question to propose than to answer. But the common sense issue is, and there's been a lot of smart engineers that develop technical reports that say, if you can get the water to the outlet early, the, the, the peak on the red will lower because you're, you're getting the water sooner. So this project um, is one of those things that will get to the water, will get the water to the red sooner, which will lower the 100-year flood on the red. It, it, it should. Now, if you ask me how much, that's like the that's like the twenty thousand dollar question you just asked me. So you know, it, 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 and we were we weren't um, that wasn't our, our our task here is to model the the moray, which it has already been done. So I think um, the, the the consequences of the outlet being uh, adequate, um, I think it is very much adequate. Um, otherwise, um, it's just a lot of. Um, stuff that could have probably been handled with a phone call. They could have just said, you know, what did you mean by this? And, and, and so I will uh, stop there. So I was close to getting all the permits. And uh, uh, I think the drain is, everybody's going to have a different opinion. I know in particular when you move back to the area of When you move to the east, right in this area here, um, there's a lot of places where uh, water's going over the road here, over here, uh, and it, and that's in the springtime. Some folks said, one guy said to me, this is a terrible day to have a meeting about a ditch out there. Everybody's going to be excited and wound up. And I might comment, this is the perfect day. Um, if you want to see where where the water goes, you can see it. You don't, it's pretty hard to see it in August and September when everybody's got the crop off and everything, look, everything looks pretty good. But 
if you go out there now, uh, not particularly today, but I bet you if you go out there Monday, you're going to see water talking to <coughs> And this ditch is not designed to handle that. But that kind of runoff would simulate what will happen when the capacity of this ditch is surpassed. And I can guarantee you the water will move north out of the system. So that's why um, um, we zoom in over here, Nick. <coughs> When we zoom in close enough, go to the top one there, and go over further, we just zoom down the ditch. This is where the ditch starts. Right now, without the ditch, this ditch from this point to here was built by private individuals for the benefit of certain individuals. And it is not intended to benefit anybody that was further out east. And and so what happens is, um, when you pull in close, um, what you're going to see today, if you go, you're going to see water that's this, this particularly back here, where there is basically no ditch. Right back there, there's probably, the, the, the township ditch is probably existing is probably about a foot deep. And what happens is the water will, it'll move through these waterways and it'll try to get into ditch two. 66 is overflowing already because 2 is full. And so what's happening is a lot of the water that's supposed to be coming through here ends up to be flooding over country or it's even runoff. So uh, these particular maps, would, if you pull over, um, if you look out today, you can see that the field drains are, are and the topography is, this is, this is what, every place you look here, the water is trying to get to two now, and it has no place to go when it gets to two, because two is full. So what we're trying to say is, uh, in particular here, this is, uh, there's a ridge right through here, <laughs> and the water is moving straight across trying to get in. This is what was called Lindquist, and I think this is another county road. And so you can see that just by the topo, um, that the water now, if there is not a ditch here, is, is, is going to continue to move north. One thing out there, and it's throughout the whole, he's shaking his head, there, there, one thing throughout the whole project, there is no ditch, there is no land that has more than two feet of drop in a mile. So you're basically talking flat. This new ditch, if it's dug, pull up there. If it's dug to the elevation that we propose, this deep will be, this ditch will be deep enough where you can drain every section to the north to the south if you have the mind to do it. And so that would, um, but that's not going to happen because if you zoom in here, Nick, again, you need, uh, one, say, one thing I always have is there's no we in water. In other words, we're not in this together. It's me, it's your water, and it's my water. But there is nobody here that's going to continue to push water north if they have an opportunity to put water into a, a drain that is going to be operating much at a much lower level. It will operate better. So what's going to happen is this guy is going to take and turn around his water and he's going to send it south because this guy, all he has to do is discourage drainage. And so it is going to be, I would think, the the people that are along the drain to the north are, are going to, in particular, uh, zoom into this one right here, Nick. Um, this is, um, I guess you guys, this is George Colbar's yard, right? Mm. No, go back. <coughs> go back, Nick. Jeez. Oh. Help me, John. Right here. Right here, Nick. Right now, the water, they're trying to get rid of their pull over neck. They're trying to get rid of the water by funneling it up here and, and shoving it down this ditch. And right now, 
the plans uh, would be that there'll be centerline culverts uh, because they're, if you look from this end of the section to this section, it doesn't matter which way you train and try to drain the water, it, it'll go either way just about as easy. But if, if we have access points for, this, for these people up here that they can get their water into this drain, I think they'll turn their water around and send it to the And the project proposes to, to coordinate with landowners to get that done. In other words, there'll be some center line culverts provided. And so that will change the way people send water down onto each other. Last but not least, and I'll be done. You most likely, if you have 13 drainage swales, you will not get 13 inlet culverts. We are going to try to cap the number of, of uh, inlets that uh, get installed from the south. Um, it is a uh, maintenance issue and it is a headache um, and, and they are probably, uh, a lot of them are wood cup in, in some other people's view could be they're unnecessary. You can do, you don't need field inlets 200 feet apart. So uh, the, the preliminary plan shows a field inlet every place there is a um, open drain. Uh, but I can almost tell you that you will, if we build a project, you and I will be standing out on the land and you're going to be telling me which one you want to eliminate. And we'll work together on that. It is not our attempt to be punitive, but um, it just makes better um, sense to limit to some degree the amount of field inlets that are being installed from the land <coughs> and from the south. That's it. Okay, uh, we'll open up to the board. I think I got one question here uh, that I can think of. Why does the affected area go one mile north of Wolf County Ditch number two is located? Well, if you can, if you look at the topo maps, and there are some sections, it's, it, it's awful easy to see that, you know, the water's going there now. Um, if the water's going there now and the new ditch will cause that water not to go there, you're getting a benefit because you're you're not gonna you're not gonna receive the water from your neighbor, and it is uh, it might not be a say well I can't get my water into that ditch but then in the same token you will have less water to deal with because you won't get water running uh, across uh, the half mile if you go to some like go to that same the section last um, night we have a we. I tried to do this quick so we could talk, but we've got elevations, and these elevations aren't gospel. They're 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 picked off of a lidar map, but they're they're within a half uh, a foot of uh, accuracy. But if you look at, the, I mean, this is section. This is this is 220. Um, it's flat. I mean, if you say the water goes north, I don't think the water goes anywhere, but. If we dig this ditch, and uh, I can tell you right now, really quick, if you want to talk about any one of these sections, that the new grade of this ditch that we're building along the south side is at 811. We're going to have nine feet of drop. So, I mean, this guy ain't going to send his water south, but this guy has every chance in the world. So this is like a, a slam dunk for this quarter that Grafsess owns. And, uh, but if you go, you don't have to go to, just keep moving me east, Nick. It looks like, holy cow, nobody needs that much drop. But you don't have to go very far and you find out all of a sudden you, you only have a drop of, of seven feet, the next mile is five feet. And all of a sudden when you get down to the very east end, it's only two feet. It's because our ditch is moving up and it's, so, but everybody along here, if they chose to do so, um, go to section number 29 there. Um, this is Vernie Johnson's yard, but this is the quarter that um, <coughs> Lingren owns. It is absolutely 
flat. But where the water goes now, it trickles through up to this corner. And if Lindgren's can, can have a ditch down here and a culvert here, that guy's not going to get Lindgren's water anymore. So that's why I think the benefit, I, don't, I shouldn't have called it the benefited area because that's not my job. But I think the area is affected up to the, uh, up to the north, all the way up to Ditch 2. And, and there are, are uh, even these people up north, it's frustrating. Uh, these are some of the highest assessed people for Ditch 2. And they can't get the water in the ditch because it's running full most of the time. So um, if that's the case, if they can't get rid of their own water, they certainly can't get rid of their water plus the other guy's water. So I think it, it is a benefit. Uh, it's just my personal opinion that the benefits are probably could be expanded. Okay. Yep. Uh, any other board member have any questions? I had a question. You were talking about site inlet pipes limiting them, and I can understand that for the cost of the system. But if a person really felt strongly that they had paid their own dime, and one will add to maintenance costs over time. But so, I just wonder. You know, yeah, so a farmer. statutorily, anything that's done as part of the proceedings is paid for by the drain okay. or, okay. or the ditch system. Um, in the future, if they find that once they're strategically placed and aren't yeah. acting properly, then they can, you know, with the permission of the drainage authority, um, add another pipe or something at their own cost in the dark of the night. Well, you won't get by with that either. Basically, the numbers of maintenance on the project. Yeah. And they would be responsible for the maintenance, for the maintenance of that, that in the future. Because then that is an issue with maintenance. <laughs> Um, whether your landowner's farm, I always get, I always hear the rent, the, the, the hired hand did it. Um, I hear that a lot when the culvert gets broke and the landowners maybe mowing their own ditches and the culvert, the end sections get broke or the trap gets broke, um, that the hired hand did it. Um, and it doesn't involve the, you know, we can't prove who broke it a lot of times, so the ditch system ends up paying for it, even if someone broke it and we can't find out who did it. Um, it's ultimately the ditch system, which is you all, that pay the cost of any maintenance. So it does get to be a maintenance issue and a cost. This trap is four hundred dollars. A fair and equity type of deal. Yeah. Um, just to hit on that particular item, you know, we were fairly aggressive when we put the number in because we're getting cost sharing from the West Polk County Soil and Water folks. So they're going to help put those in. They're going to pay to put some of those in. So and initially when we put the numbers together, uh, more is better because we didn't want to undershoot the amount that we would put in. So uh, there is some benefit to the... Yeah, so the, I mean, that was trying, and that's us trying to minimize or get the cost down of this project because the side water and pipes are expensive. You know, on, when they're long, um, you know, they, you know they, they're going to be anywhere from $3,500 to $4,000 per pipe on, in the... In the some of the deeper areas where there's more spoil to go through. Um, so we were looking at, with the SWCD and the watershed district, looking at cost share on some of these side water inlet pipes. Well, pretty soon, I kind of scolded Jerry as, you know, we're out here trying to find extra money to save the project money, and you're adding two, three times the pipes than what we would normally do on a ditch system. You're kind of, it's counterproductive. So, and then also in the future costs of maintenance in the future is gets to be very expensive. So we are, you know, and like Gary said, strategically locate the pipes. We can, as the contractor constructs a project, he can do some maintenance on the you know, adjoining two systems that might be 200 feet apart and yeah. put them into one system. So. Yeah. All right. Any other board questions? I I would just say that's a pretty big point to emphasize. That there's no intention to leave any, if you will, landlocked area for access into the system through these sidewalk agreements. Even though the numbers are reduced. I think, I think there's just a lot of common sense that will come into play there. Right? Right. Yeah. One, one controversial thing will be how many centerline culverts do we get? That means culverts coming from the north through township roads. There we're going to vastly limit them to um, on the section roads, we'll be on the section corners. We will have new pipes coming in across. If they're too, if they're too high, 
if they're at the right grade, we'll just extend them. But in particular, like on some areas where some landowners are already told me they would like to turn the water around and, and send it south, we will have to uh, tactfully approach how many and where they'll go. Um, because, you know, at, if, if you, we, we won't let field inlets get out of hand, but we also won't let centerline culverts get out of hand. We know that if you are getting for example, if you are getting assessed the highest rate, we should we should give you access to the ditch. I mean, you're entitled to it. So we need to give some centerline culverts in the appropriate places. And that will be on an individual basis. And I think maybe some of the comments that will come before right. now will be addressed individually if somebody has any questions. So I think at this time we'll open it up to the public and what we'd like to do is state your name for the record. and. Uh, <coughs> We'll address the question, sir. Okay. David Thompson, landowner in Markham Township. <coughs> First of all, I want to say that this is an excellent and a very well-needed project that actually should have been done probably 20 to 40 years ago, and uh, we probably wouldn't have all these issues. But one question I have is, is the benefit area. With the benefit area going one mile south to 21, it only would seem to make sense in my, my mind that you would go north the full mile up to ditch two. Even land next to Ditch 2 will see a huge benefit due to the fact water south of them will have somewhere else to flow. We all know that in this country, water wants to flow northwest. With Ditch 2 running full in the spring or other large rain events, without Ditch Number 16, land next to Ditch 2 will become a holding ponds, and nobody wants that. And during the summer, the crop loss, as we know, can be tremendous. So, once again, this is a great project and will benefit a large area a larger area than what is being viewed and assessed right at this moment. So, thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, some of these, uh, if the viewers take note to some of the questions like what David had here, I think maybe that's a question too that maybe we'll bring up again when the viewers after their report. So, um, probably, you know, if we can kind of reel it more towards engineering or it's kind of hard until we do both, really, because that's perfect, but just maybe a note of that to the viewers so they can address David's question there, too. Anybody else? What's, what's going to happen to the water once it goes across uh, under 220? What's going to affect the level of rain and the water crossing under church? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, can you state your name, please? Uh, Robert Peterson. Robert. It will incrementally raise the water higher, but it will be at the lower events, so that the water probably on a 25-year on a event will probably be higher by an inch, but it will also be five feet below anywhere it could possibly come in the park. So that's, uh, that's the beauty of getting the early water to the outlet. Um, putting this amount of water in when the marae is already full uh, happens now anyway, because the water we have a 100-year flood, uh, the agricultural ditches are irrelevant at that point because they're all, they're all backed up and they're storing water. So I, it's not going to affect any folks on the rain. But I also have a concern whether those of you are not on the assessment area. I realize the value of the ditch to people from the east, not denying that at all. I have, we are located in the northwest point corner of section 30 and I don't feel that the assessment is beneficial to us, we're right up against Ditch 2 and Highway 220. Um, you, know, you guys want the ditch, that's all fine, but I don't think the assessment should be pushed on everybody just for that sake. I'm Mike Creechie. I just got to get an idea here. Are we supposed to be commenting about the engineer's report or the viewer's report? Well, we're, we, we haven't heard the viewer's report, so okay, I guess so we, we, don't, we shouldn't comment on the benefit area at all, correct? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I got one question about the engineer's is are the culverts going to be trapped as you're going under the township road along the ditch? Yes. So that no water will go back north like it has been going in the past. Right. We okay. will trap the uh, south end of the inlet culverts. Uh, we will in fact trap the culverts coming from the south too. So that once the water enters into the drain, it won't spill out either way, north or south. Any of the water that comes out of ditch to in a flooding event that floods both miles will not be able to go back north from Ditch 2 like it has been for 50 years, correct? Say that again. Any of the water that comes out of Ditch 2 in the spring 
then goes basically floods the whole way in between County, County Road 21 and Ditch 2. Will not will have access to get back to the Ditch 2, correct? Because if they're all going to, all the culverts that you put through this township road are going to be trapped on the south side. Right. Okay. Right. Yes, that's correct. And, and the intent is to confine the 10-year event. When it gets higher than that, we we don't, you know, if you don't get any drainage, and if you look at some of the drains I was driving up here, and particularly a lot of the new ones, the water in the ditch is higher than the field now already, and so that's because they're trapped, and, and that's what you want. Anybody else? Sure. Uh, Mark Foley, my own property in the northeast quarter of the section. 35 and uh, Tabor 31. A uh, couple of engineering questions. Uh, Jerry, currently there's a north south culvert basically on the west edge of every section from the north south culvert currently. How many more in the design? How many more north south culverts are going to be in this project? Basically, right now, there's only one per mile. Most of those are on the western edge of any given section. Right. What we would do is, I think, <coughs> once we go to, to, to the bid, uh, you're in this area here, Mark? Okay. Um, I would anticipate we, we, we probably will see culverts on both sides of the township roads and at least one at a quarter mile. So there's going to be significant north-south culverts over what currently is there. Right, and we're and this these folks will be, instead of running the water through here, will probably run their water to here, and that is accounted for in the design because it's included in the drainage area. So these folks are not going to that that drainage is not going to be sending water beyond what we calculate to be a 10-year event. So the ditch is built to handle that. <coughs> And so this this is a area improvement then, correct? I think it's a, it is, and uh, okay. a lot of times, you know, I I, I get a little personal sometimes, but I'd much rather be north of a ditch than south of a ditch when it overflows, because the road is always higher than the soil, and you look on it looks like the Sea of Galilee on one side, and the others is it's dry, and that goes to protection benefits. I mean. But that's just the way, uh, life's not entirely <coughs> fair. Land to the south is usually the first one to, um, prior to a 100-year event, they get hit first, and then when a 100-year event gets hit by Bobby, well then everybody, all bets are off. We've got an approach who wants to say that our ditch is going to cause, is going <coughs> to create a, um, a dike that's going to prevent uh, the land behind it from flooding. Absolutely impossible. But so, uh, in the same token, during a large event, we're not going to hurt, we're not going to help people. It's, it's only designed for, a, for a, 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 a rainfall in the summer. And most of these ditches, if you want to see how well they'll really perform, we'll look at them on Monday. And that's when, too, that would simulate too much rainfall. <clears throat> uh, my next question is on, on design again. Uh, you had mentioned earlier that down by 220 end, it'll be approximately, bottom of ditch will be approximately 10, 11 feet below grade. Uh, I understand that. And back to uh, section 35, I don't know that all too well. Uh, bottom of the culverts, the proposed culverts that are going in there, the elevation of those culverts in relation to the Bottom of the culverts, one mile north up on ditch two. Okay, very good question. The reason why our ditch, pull it up now. Can you repeat that question, Jerry? <coughs> uh, what's, uh, I can't. I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, wait a let, me, let me say something first that it, it kind of refreshed my memory. In the whole design of this ditch, this is Mark's yard. This hole right here dictated the grade for the whole ditch because this, this hole is the lowest pothole in the whole drainage area. And we wanted to make sure we wanted to make sure that this ditch was able to receive that there was enough drop. 
So there is right now, I think, two and a half feet of drop from the bottom of this hole to the bottom of the ditch. So it gave you a basis for, you know, two and a half feet might not be great, but it will, if you can cooperate with your neighbors, which you can because you own this you farm this one too, you could theoretically drain that pothole out. Okay, now what was the real question? Why didn't the, why didn't the watershed just pay to fill the hole? Seriously, I mean, you probably spent a shit pile of money here. You, uh, you could have filled speaking? the hole. Mike sure Gasper. Mike Gasper, you got comment? You might I did. Add to it? I made it. Okay. <laughs> why? Why, Mike? Because we are changing the grade there ever so slightly to get that two feet of drop. I'm right here, I think Nick helped me out. What's the difference between existing ditch and new? It's probably on the order, I'm going by memory, about two and a half feet deeper than it is now. So this ditch isn't going to look like anything compared to it on the other end. But what it does is it sets the tone why we need three feet of drop per mile because we got it coming from kingdom come is what we are. And so <clears throat> there's no point in digging this ditch, Mike, if we, aren't, if we can't get water into it. So we wanted, because I think uh, Mark is probably going to be assessed, he needs to, we need to give him access to drop. What was your other question? My question is, let's say in section 35, the bottom up in the northeast corner, you're going to have, you indicated possibly two north-south culverts in that area. Right. What is the relationship of those north-south elevation of the bottom of those culverts in the design to the elevation of the culverts one mile straight north coming out of ditch two. I don't know that. I don't know that. My concern is with ditch two, uh, historically everybody on this side of the room knows that we've had beautiful one inch rains <coughs> and out by Euclid they can get a three or four inch gusher and within 18 hours we are losing crop in this corridor because ditch two fills up the traps, uh, numerous related traps and or uh, gullies in the ditch bank are washed out because of spring flooding and if people don't shore them back up and when ditch two gets full and over capacity it spills out, fills up the section to the north of this proposed project and comes back. At a 50% level of uh, ditch two Everything as it is currently is stagnant and flat. Water will not move north. It'll actually start flowing south. Between 50% to 75%, we see water filtrating to the south. Here's your section, absolutely black. This is the section we're talking about to the north. Uh, it is, there is no drop to speak of. Maybe there's three feet in this direction, but from this direction, what will happen is this will, fall, this will fill and then it will, it will, it will. If this drain is not as full as two, this water is going to be leaving the system. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I have no problem with the project the way it's being laid out. I'm just bringing up a tactical point on the bottom of these ditches on how this water is going to flow in that area. Obviously, when ditch two or if we get a six inch rain event, all bets are off where, where the water is going to go. I'm talking at a. <coughs> one inch or two inch beautiful rain in our neighborhood and we get uh, historically Euclid gets more rain than we do now water hits this area in 12 to 18 hours after the main water event and ditch two comes up in elevation relatively fast and the way it currently is it back back flows to the south so thank you um, mainly too because it's getting 66 water it's it's overwhelmed ditch to this. So, and this ditch is not intended to be a helper to the two. I mean, two probably should be considered on its own merit, 66. But we are building this ditch so we don't have to do nothing to two. But it is meant to benefit the people who are either getting water into it or water, excuse me, wire away from it, but it is not to med built to take spilled water from other drain drainage. It just can't handle it. 
and it's not intended to be that way. Some people argue, let's not build this ditch, let's just build a humongous ditch too. Well, it's probably, this is probably the better option. Any other questions? Gary? Yeah, why don't we go start back with a problem where the start comes from, 66. Right. You know, you're, yeah, like you just got done saying, <coughs> you could eliminate 66. Uh, a lot of your problems would be done, they would disappear. When the water comes out of 66, Mark's charge is underwater. No doubt about it. And good, I, good it, question. It is, a, right now he's put a small dike up there, which is, is, a, is Probably should have been higher and, and should go for half a mile. For the record, you're at Penn State. You're at Penn State. Anyway, uh, there it is. That's what he's talking about. If, if you get yeah, that, that water that's coming down 66, I believe there's a bunch of it coming out of Parnell. Zoom in. Hmm? Yes, I think it hooks up okay. someplace by the river. Okay. Right, uh, right Here's our ditch. It's coming here. And this is where 66 is running into two. But pull out, Nick, and look at look at what. Well, it's, life ain't fair, but these guys are paying 100 percent. And you look back here. These guys are paying 25 percent. And look back here, Nick. Guys on Northland Corner are paying just as much for a ditch that's two miles away as the where from the where where the water comes from. Life ain't fair. I mean, that is an old ditch, and this benefited area was presented at that time. But you know what? Uh, we're not going to stop this water coming because 66 was a natural swale that is improved to move the water out of the, the system. But you can say what you want. This water is coming anyway. So, you know, and it ends up in ditch two. And here we're building this ditch way over here. Where are we, Nick? One mile north of 41. Right there. Right, right there. <clears throat> um, if you look at the benefit on two, that's even more alarming of who's paying for two. I'm going to tell you. Guys at Northland Corner are paying for ditch too. Is that fair? No. But they are, and it's the way life is. Until it gets changed. Until it, it, gets, changed. Until it gets changed. And th this is operated under the county, um, the county. It's a county ditch. So the watershed, unless it's turned over, um, it's a county issue. And because it's a county ditch. Two and 66 are Polk County ditches. And they operate and maintain them. And they don't improve them. You know, they try to hold the side slopes, mainly. Okay. Any other questions? I'm not done yet. <laughs> There's no reason, you know, you're, you're, you're just saying, you're just pushing it aside saying it was a ditch there before. This is modern, this was a new farming era. You got the ditch going across. You got ditches every two miles, or every mile going to the river, and none of them are taking six feet of water. None of them. Oh, I can tell you, there's guys in this room that would say, "Yeah, there is 66 water on the high end." No, actually, if you if you come here next week, you'll see that where it really overfills is along uh, County Road 66. It's coming cross country. Ditch 39. It's all. It comes across there because it gets that high. But they, no. That isn't even a ditch anymore. No. It's all I'm going to tell you what happens. 66 has overflowed from time to time. It has caused washouts. The washout areas are encouraged by the people to the north or the east because they want to dump the water and they want 66 to lower quicker. And so the, the erosion is not. Polk County don't go back and fix them because the people to the east want that water to go and it ends up in this drain and it drains on other ditches and that's what's happened and when you look at that I can even show you on topo maps I can even show you where the spoil hasn't been replaced so 
you know, that's an issue. If you if you think 66 is so great, they should improve it and put all the spoil on the west side. But it ain't going to happen because unless it's turned over to the watershed, they are very reluctant. And farmers actually go out and fix 66 with their own money, and they call them up and say, "Can you? Will you help pay me? Because I had to pay Paul Zavril to put this spoil back in place on my neighbor's land because he wouldn't do it." That's what's wrong with 66. And I think we want to don't get sidetracked on the 66. You need to have that's what I was going to mention in Dish 66. I've been I, I farm. I'm not on Dish 66. I'm in a protected water before it turns into 66. But like 40 some years ago, I was a young farmer then, and Jim Polkerback came over the first time I ever met him, and he had a petition to to uh, repair or improve. I can't remember which was so long ago. Dish 66, and I signed it because that's where my water goes. And, and he explained it to me that it needed a lot of work. So we we put that into the county, and they're by law supposed to fix that. What we want because we're landlords. And we'll request just like you guys. And then there's a petition from out by Tabor <coughs> not to do it, not, not to repair it. So the county backed down and didn't do what they should have done, in my opinion. So that's 45 years ago. Nothing's, I don't think there's much change. The county went in and cleaned a little bit in places. But so it needs work, you know. It needs something like this with a berm and side inlet pipes or whatever on the north side or the north east side. <coughs> And it might have helped that ditch two situation. Well, you got ditch two. You read that ditch two a year or two, or two years ago, whatever. And I got water coming over at the hangar over that number two road, road over going up to the north. Not a lot, but it's that much water putting in there. You got 66 of water coming in. You got two. You yeah. you clean. You're starting from the wrong end. You know, you bring the water down, which everybody we know. And you get the 66 and two. Where's it going? You can't, it's got to go out of it. Right. It's going out of the ditch. <coughs> That's what I'm saying. Isn't there some place you can get, let some water go out of 66 straight west? Uh, yeah, it needs work. We do accept petitions that the county has nothing to do with. You guys petition for an improvement on the ditch too? And we'll address that just like this one. Mm -hmm. Any other quick questions, or else we're going to maybe get into the viewers and then maybe open it up for sir? Mm -hmm. My name is Shane Gonosik. Uh, our, our land is in section 36. Uh, I believe my yard is the only one that's being touched by this whole project, which I don't have a problem with this project. It's To me, I think it's going to be a benefit. No big deal. But what I have a problem with is basically I'm losing all my tree protection. I have not gotten an explanation to myself about what's actually going to happen. And I think that may be a viewer's question as well there, uh, Shane, I think. I mean, you guys got some answers for that or some homework done on that? Yeah, we can, we can cover it here. Okay. We'll cover it, Shane, when they're done with their presentation. Okay. I got to put a no, we have addressed that there on another project done on the logic of the same issue. And we paid the, paid the, the, the system paid some money to a landscaper or something to. And I don't know if he ever really planned it or not, but well, he got we, some money. We, yeah, and that's, and then, that's, that's another story. Yeah. 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 To answer your question, too, what the ditch will look different right by your yard. We'll, we'll pinch it in so that the quonset and everything can stay. And so, you know, what, it, what I'm getting at is we changed the, the, the slope so we could funnel it through the, the small portion by your yard. The culverts through the road there, uh, there'll be two more added. There'll be two 24 inch pipe pushed through there. So that the, the, the existing grade at that point at your yard is good. That is new ditch grade. And the reason you can't get rid of the water is because you don't slope to it. Yeah. Hey, like I said, I'm not against the whole ditch project. <coughs> I'm uh, a little worried about what's going to happen with my yard. Uh, one other thing on the engineering point of view is because of all, all our, our new uh, studies and tech reports that each and every mile road is designed to limit the amount of water that's allowed to go into the system. So it is called retention. 
or it is it is meant um, body to to control the water that comes through. Every mile road upstream will intentionally be designed to hold water once the ditch gets beyond its capacity. And how we do it is by sizing the culverts, which some folks in the room will say they're too small, but they are consistently designed to hold that water. So that would not hurt the marine folks too. So sorry to go back on this, but so you're saying you're funneling it behind my shed. My question is, is there going to be a larger ditch from the east and then it funnels down and then it gets it's larger again? You'll have a wider bottom, so the capacity of the ditch will will have the same capacity. It just will look different. Yeah, and the reason I'm asking you that is we can't afford in that spot right there right. to have another dead spot because we already have just to the north there's that dike that completely plugs everything off and screws everything in every right, direction you know, at this point in time. I think it will work a little better without the trees because we won't have the snow, but from for your peace of mind, that box culvert there is is the culvert that's going to be there. And the ditch is going to have a lot more capacity downstream. You will not be seeing the water overflow adjacent to your Yeah, like, like you said, I'm not worried about the water. Okay. That's not my point of it. Oh. I'm worried about mm -hmm. I'm losing my yard. You know, oh. it damages the okay. about, so that's a different topic. So. Okay. Any other quick questions? Sure. Uh, Kevin Johnson, uh, I want to wander around where Brandon Johnson's yard is, a mile east of 220. So when you were talking, Jerry, about the people to the north of the ditch across the road, and you're talking about a culvert, the culvert's coming in from the north, are you saying that when you, um, you said one on each mile line and one in the quarter line, and you had that, um, funneled into your project as expenses. How many more culverts do you have in your expenses? I would say there's probably one, on, like for example here on Graf says, there'll be a culvert coming through here. There'll be two here. Three a second, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so did you assess so it for three a, sec a section? Or did you set, assess it for five a section? I don't accept the same, but the, the estimate, pull it back next. Um, okay, no, go in and I want to move it. Pull it in. Okay, this is this is where you're talking about. There's on any. On any particular sector. No. This is Lingren land. They'll, they'll most likely run their water here, and there'll probably be a culvert here, and this guy will... And so there'll be, and there'll be vastly more small culverts coming from the south, but... <coughs> But everybody that is in the 100% or the highest bracket, whatever that ends up to be, I, if, 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 I will be, I will be told by somebody, if the, if they're not paying for it, they're not getting any water in it, and I will be forced to raise the elevation, which would be not good. Because we are building a ditch to not drain land, but if if somebody is not paying for it, they should not have access to it. My my view is if 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 they are getting a high rate, we have to give them some access. I would think to answer your question, three per mile. Except way out east, there's more. But it's because the ditch is so puny over there, and it's a minimum maintenance road, and it's, they just put them in themselves. So you talked about the water going to ditch too, and you want everybody to drain it back through. And then when it rains out east, and you can't get your water into ditch too, but now you're going to limit that on that end to only three, how to get up? Oh, uh, three culverts will, will, will drain the half section. Uh, a 24 inch culvert, appropriately sized, will go to, a lot of people will not give you more than one per quarter because they say that is taxing the system. So you will have, especially in your area here, you know, if you want to talk about how the ditch is going to look here, you're, you're, you're not going to be farming that strip anymore. That's my next question. Yeah, you're not going to be. It'll be resident. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> Mike Gasper, um, question for you, Jerry. 
Um, I think some of us have got uh, uh, a quick program, you know, like I've got, I'm on section 32 there, up in the northeast corner, and I have pipes scheduled to go in. We're holding off putting those in until we get the project, so it's going to cover some of the costs. And I think all the other guys have the same thing. But they've They've allocated so many funds, but if the if the project is built and the ditch is a little bit bigger than when I signed off on it, I'm all for it. But I'm realizing maybe these pipes aren't going to be big enough that I'm allotted there. Will the watershed give the extra footage of pipe to cover that, or am I on the hook for that? Well, you've got that tile now. That's it's, correct. It's I don't have the outlets done because, like I talked to the to the board until we get the ditch built, we can't do the outlets. I, I'll say this, Mike, you're going to have better access to that, easier access than the people to the north. Well, I, because I, you're going to have one I, of their... I think you missed my question. I was just wondering if we have to add to the piping. Oh. Is that something that the, that the watershed's going to pick up over and above the piping that we already have a lot of that they won't have to pay for? The piping yeah. I, when, we, when, that when the construction is extra when the project is Ex extra length. Yeah, the, yeah, when we when the project is constructed, you're going to have the length of pipe that's required for yeah. to get through the spoil. So you I mean don't worry about what you have for equip because they don't even look at length so much as size and when and the, the design criteria for equip. They don't necessarily look at length so much. You're gonna have a pipe that's gonna be long enough to get through that spoil and be able to maintain the back slope. Provided by the project. Yep. Okay. And, and, like, and just one other question in regards to the traps. Are we dealing with those those heavier cast traps, the ones that really work versus or are they just No. For not. <laughs> We're dealing with the, the typical black ones. We can either put interior traps, which sometimes are better because the lawnmower, if you hit them, you really got to whack it. We can put interior traps. They're the same price as the exterior traps. But with the field inlets, we're going to be required to rip wrap the outlets now. So that, and they will be indented. When you look down the edge of the ditch, your pipe is going to look like it's too short, but it's going to be intentionally pulled in so that the water, the ice and stuff will go by it. So that's why if we got a five to one inslope and we got a three to one to the trap, it's still mobile. Yeah. Because well, the <clears throat> I think you're taking the page out of my playbook, what I did up there on two. And that that's just makes good sense right. plus for erosion purposes. And then being able to push that rip wrap back into there. <clears throat> but if I wanted to pay the upgrade on those traps on my land or any of us, could we do that? Put better traps on it? So Mike is referring to what they call the waterman gate. They're, they're, uh, they're way more expensive, um, and they do seal well. Um, so the ones that you typically do on legal drainage projects are the black ones that go over the pipe, either exterior or interior design. Um, so I guess the answer would be absolutely. If I, I mean, Delray, you have to. I think it would have to be done initially as part of the project. As essentially a landowner add on, so and then maintain from the fort, then. right if it's not part of the engineer's design but somebody wants to do it additionally, if the board authorizes that, then I think that's fine because there is another twist with equip, they don't pay for any traps. So the project, even if you got your pipe, equip doesn't pay for traps, it doesn't, it's a new rule for them. They just pass, they just, it's just a new rule in the last year. So, um but I'm not, I'm not sure that that was, when I put a clip through, <clears throat> they, the equip guidelines are either for, you know, slow the water route down for erosion or to keep water from uh, coming back into the field. I think it was those two pretenses you could, <clears throat> you would qualify for the equip. Did you sign, um, and, and that's, we can talk about that, but I mean, to the short an answer is then that Del Rey has indicated that the project would have to pay for a waterman gate, which is twice as much as the... Couldn't, couldn't that be no. a request to the board afterwards and the cost above and beyond what the normal pipe would be for Mike, say if it's 100, and the new one he wants is two, and he would pay the difference to the... Right. Right. I mean, that okay. could be a request to the project after it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'd be all for. A typical mm -hmm. flat gate costs 150, but it costs two, three hundred to get it installed. Yeah. So maybe if we give you 300, you install your own waterman. 
because you know uh, contractors need to make money too, so they, it isn't cost. But so you know the cost associated with putting the puny ones on, or uh, fifty percent is labor usually. Close. Mm -hmm. I think some of them things will be addressed as the project moves forward with each landowner. They're going to have a little different, you know. Yeah, and the key is to make sure that everyone's treated fairly because everyone's paying for it. So if there is cost, but if he's meeting his cost, right on, and I go above that, that's his. I think a waterman is going to be four times the cost. Yeah, yeah, it's but, they're, but they're, that would be his decision at that point. You know? Yeah, and they are. He is correct. I mean, they're they're you know a thousand, probably a thousand feet, you know. And, but to me, they're worth it, and I use that's what I use. And that's another good reason to eliminate them because then we need then that's less good flat gates. Yeah, and I mean, I'm all for the pitching in. Part. Okay. I have no problem with that. Kevin? Okay. Well, one more question, Jerry. Can you give me like the visual on the on this end uh, for mine and the Larson boys and okay. my uncles here? What? So where my groundless tree lines are, where the tree line is, right. when the ditch is going to be that deep there, are you saying the spillway is going all the way to the tree line? What Nick is going to do is he's going to show you what your ditch is going to look like if you're standing in the bottom of the new ditch looking west. It'll show the cross section. Um, which one are we in, Nick? He's fine. This is section. What section are you in? I don't know the section. <laughs> <laughs> 32, right here. This is what it'll look like. You're standing in the bottom of the ditch yes, by um, Vern's yard. You're facing east. This is the top of the road. Yep. And this is right here. It's going to be your trees. Okay, so the top of the spillway is almost over to the trees all the way to two point. Yes. There's a lot of dirt to get rid of. Yeah. So how many acres is that for Larson? It's in the report, I think. Yeah, well, you know me, I didn't it. Um, <laughs> I think they can answer that question. I think we, we're, we're getting, what's the right word? I think it's 100 plus 66. So the 100 is where the ditch will sit, so 110. And then beyond that is 66 feet of slope easement. But we are in that 110 feet, we're going to also daylight out a foot below the road or higher. If we're higher than the road, we can get by with less. So, and then we'll have our 16 feet of grass, and that's our 110. So you'll farm up to the, where we see the berm, and that has to be because of the new rules. Right. Right. So you will look like um, it'll, in particular, Larson's. Larson's and your section are the biggest ones where we've got to get rid of the most dirt because we're just going through a, a bump before the river. Jerry, I think at this time we're going to put, uh, we got our three viewers, Jerry Bennett, Roger Flashwinger, and Robert Wagner. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I see Jerry nodding off there, so I thought it would be a better <laughs> Well, I think some of the questions maybe that remain out there might be, you know, work. incorporated. Yeah. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, glad to see you all here. Uh, my name is Jerry Dunn. I'm one of the viewers. What I think what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll do introductions. I'll have the other two viewers introduce themselves. Uh, why don't you go ahead, Rob? Give a little background. Morning. I'm Rob Wagner, uh, former. Oak County Assessor, so I'm a little bit familiar with some of the areas in the county, but uh, retired now and doing the ditch. Yeah. My name is Roger Weissmeyer. I farmed for 25 years. Uh, I had a 20-year career in law enforcement, and uh, now I'm kind of looking after the farming end on this viewing, because I am not where my heart is. Okay, as I mentioned, my name is Jerry Bennett. Uh, uh, my background with drainage anyway is I worked with uh, Houston Engineering for about 28 years and worked a lot with a lot of the drainage systems. I also had my private <coughs> consulting firm for uh, 
for a few years as well until I, until I retired. Uh, well, we're going to talk a little bit. I've got some uh, PowerPoint slides, and uh, I don't really like PowerPoint that well. I know we've had a lot of discussion this morning, but there's a few points I want to make on these, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but we're going to kind of go through those. Uh, we did the viewing on, the, on your drainage system, determine the benefits, and in this particular case, what Jerry had mentioned, this is a 10-year design ditch, right? So a 10-year design is a pretty good ditch considering uh, your typical ditch out in the valley. Uh, the drainage system I worked with, we have 280 miles of drainage systems, and uh, we only had a couple ditches that were 10-year design and above. The two ditches that we had, one was a uh, constructed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the other one was a 566 project. Those systems at that design level, uh, you're going to see some pretty good drainage from those. So we're going to talk about a little bit um, what we did. Uh, this is just some definitions, right? Um, you got your water management authority, which in this case, watershed district. Appraisers, uh, we've been appointed by the board to do the, the benefit determinations. Benefits, uh, we're going to talk about that today, right? So the benefits um, means improvement of the property. So we're looking at improvements to property through increased value. And that's how we determine our benefits for this system. It's increased value to the system. Uh, there's other ways we can look at doing that. Increased productivity for production. Increased utility from the construction. So we will be looking at using increased value. Uh, damages. We're looking at fair market value for the land that's going to be needed for the drainage system. So in this case, we've got value towards uh, the land that's going to be purchased, basically, or acquired through uh, the hearing for the permanent right-of-way. And also, we're going to be looking at acquiring right-of-way for the temporary construction. And we'll talk about that as well. Okay? Uh, this drainage project started out with a petition. And here is just kind of highlighting that a little bit. What we're looking at here basically is new drainage. Okay, so we're following uh, the guidance from your petition and your engineer design uh, and looking at benefits based on a drainage project. Okay? Uh, just making a note here, we went through the engineer's report, but this project started with this preliminary report back on March 9, 2018. Okay? And then following that, uh, the viewers were appointed, and we were appointed on June 18, 2018, to look at the benefits. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to give you this a little bit of a highlight on what we do with our end of it. Uh, we don't do engineering; we do benefit determinations, and what goes into that is, is a few things. We're going to talk about those a little bit today. One is we've got a. Um, We've got the benefit damage statement, um, which outlines how we determine the benefits. There's a tabular report that we created. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We end up doing plat maps for each individual parcel, uh, each on a, a section basis. And then we've done uh, a benefit map. Now, I, I believe a lot of you folks in your notice have already received the property owner's report. Okay, which lists out your benefits, and you've also received uh, the benefit map, correct? So you guys have seen that. Okay? Okay, so determining benefits. There's some different benefits that we determined on the system. Uh, why do we call our direct <coughs> benefits? Those are going to be the direct benefits derived from the drainage of the system, and those are using the increased market value. And just to point out here, what we determined is that property values out there around four thousand dollars an acre okay and with the ditch system in place we're looking at an increased value to the property of about forty six hundred uh, we also looked at all the benefits those all the benefits in this case primarily all the land use is agricultural right and we do have some acres that um, are woodlots we didn't apply those same benefits to those but we did apply an outlet benefit for the woodlots and normally in the past, a lot of times they would be insignificant and that they would just go apply a straight direct benefit to those. But the way we do it, we'll separate those out so that they're not charged that same direct benefit. Uh, we looked at converted wetlands. And the way that we did that is because we don't have access to your FSA records unless you give us permission. Uh, and it's a requirement that we do this. 
is that we use the national wetland inventory maps. And then what we did is, because we don't have your FSA maps, we looked at wetlands that appear to be converted. <coughs> In other words, the drainage systems connected to those on the NWIs. And then if those wetlands appear to be converted, uh, we, we looked at a change of land use on those. And that value on those came out to about 1,150. Now, if some folks have wetlands that have been identified as converted on those plats, uh, and you have FSA information that shows they're not, we can take a look at those, okay? <coughs> but because that we're limited on the data that we can work at. And then the road benefits, uh, we came up with about $40,000, uh, 40, 40,885 in road benefits. And those benefits were applied to, at a similar rate to the A, okay? okay. Uh, permanent right-of-way, that's for the construction. Uh, we applied the $4,000 an acre uh, for the permanent right-of-way, and uh, we have a total of 87.96 uh, acres that's going to be required for the permanent right-of-way. So total right-of-way payments, three fifty-one eight forty. Okay. Uh, and then the temporary right-of-way, we would use $300 an acre, and that would be based on a two-year cropping loss. Okay. So we got 113.47 acres, and uh, total right away that is 34,041 for this project. We mentioned the tabular report. Uh, you can <coughs> see portions of this. Uh, just part of the thing we do when we put, put together the information. It's going to include the uh, you know parcel ID, parcel description, ownership, address. Going to list out all the different types of benefits uh, that would be on the property. Okay. And along with the amount each track would be benefited and then the damages. Here's what the plat maps look like. Um, these are done on, by a section and it's going to lay out on their parcel ID numbers, number of acres benefited in that 40. They're done by 40 acre tracks and uh, the different areas uh, that will go back to the benefit and map on how you're benefiting. And identifies the roads, identifies the converted wetlands, and the different land use. So the brown here would be ag, and if you have trees or shelter belts, those are shown in the green. Okay. Uh, here's our benefited map. Well, this one is for roads. We did a benefit map for roads. This lists all the roads that would be in the benefited area, the road name, and then this is just an abstract total uh, of the benefits, in this case for DOT, Polk County Highway, Northland Township, and Tabor. And we mentioned that that total comes out to the 40,885. Okay. okay, then here's our benefit uh, map, list out the benefits. And a couple things to note on here is that we have uh, the green, which is our upper rate, right, 415 an acre. Um, we have a secondary rate in there in the purple. That secondary rate is at the 350. Now, if you go down to the next rate, you'd say, well, that should be 250. That, sec that orange rate should be 250, but the reason it's not, because we incrementally <coughs> moved that down due to proximity and some other factors, is that because it has a dual benefit. Uh, that area has a, has a benefit to going to the ditch to the south, as well as a potential to the ditch to the north, which is a typical way we do that. Um, boundary, uh, we've set up the boundary uh, to the north here, and I know there's been some questions on that. We'll see questions on that as well. Um, but done in a similar manner, okay? Okay. Right away. Uh, here we're just showing the right of way again. Permanent right of way, which would include the ditch right of way and one rod grass strip. And then the temporary right of way would extend beyond that uh, to level spoil uh, and has a different rate. So, permanent right of way again at $4,000 an acre, and the temporary right of way was set at $300. Okay. <coughs> And then total benefits to the drain system uh, came out to 3058689 That includes benefits to all of the lands that are included uh, at those rates, as well as the road benefits. 
Okay. So with that, we, uh, we've identified here kind of a potential assessment. Uh, this doesn't include any occurred interest or amortization. And I think in your property owner's report, they, uh, you know, they identify what that amortization would be. Okay. So I think it comes out to, um, I think we're looking at 20 year amortization. So I think on the ditch at the highest rate, it comes out to roughly 15 bucks an acre at that highest level, plus your, your interest, whatever your interest rate that they can, uh, can get for this project and sell lot. <coughs> So I guess we're ready for questions. I guess we can go back. Maybe to this map. So questions. Uh, Mike Gasper. Um, I've got land in 32 and everything, which is the direct up and everything. I understand that. It's certainly going to be. And I'm all for the project. But I do have the land up in the northeast quarter of 29, Northland in the northeast quarter of 30. Yeah. North and that water all goes north. And if it's going to see a benefit, it's going to be from overland flooding. And if we have that much rainfall in the summer, it's really no benefit. My crop's gone. Um, so I just don't see where the benefit, at least on those northeast quarters that I've got there, I think they have it assessed right now in the orange for 80 acres, the south 80 acres in both those pieces. I can show you all the aerial uh, photographs of water sitting on there and how that water all does move north to the ditch and there is no water that really goes along the road ditch either that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can zoom in on that. What's it? Yeah. 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 Comment while he's looking for this. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm on, I used to farm and I own 32 Tabor. Um, my water used used to, up to this point, go a mile to the west to the Tar Road 66 and go a mile to the north to ditch two because it could not go to the east. Excuse me, to the west. Why wouldn't everybody in ditch two along there have some kind of benefit? And then one other thing just to think about: in next week when ditch two breaks out. Getting back to the comment I asked Jerry earlier, if this new ditch is all going to be trapped so none of the water on the south can go north, on my section on 32 there's a spillway on the Tabor on, on the township road. The water's going to break out of County Road Ditch 2. It's going to go over that spillway, which it has probably done 15 of the 30 years I farmed. Now that water can't go back to Ditch 2 because it's all going to be trapped, so it's going to have to go down this new ditch. There should be an assessment for the whole mile to the north. Maybe a small assessment, but an assessment. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to comment on that same thing with Jester. We're in section 30, right in the very corner there. Yeah, I, think, I think what I want to do is cover these one at a time. So the first question that we have, okay, about where are we talking about in 30 and 20? I'm going to mention a couple things on how this boundary got established on the north, because I know there's been questions on it, right? couple things. Uh, we have landowner meetings that we talked about boundary that were held. Roger and, and Rob attended those. And a couple things that we did. Um, your pointer on here, I'm trying to see if we can get this pointer. Or is it another one? Okay. So one thing on that, on that um, boundary here in 29, 28 and 29, when I looked at the LIDAR, I agree with what you're saying. We originally were going to drop that boundary lower there, right? And on the original maps we had from the landowner meeting, 30 was not in up in this northwest quarter, but we did put it in for the hearing, and we want to talk about that, because when we looked at the road ditch on the west side, on the LIDAR, the road ditch actually showed the drainage pretty flat there coming back south. Okay, we didn't want to leave it out 
if in fact the landowner was able to drain that water bath, right? But normally when we have a hearing, these boundaries are something that we have a lot of discussion on. You know, as the viewers, we can set those based on the landowner meeting and based on the LIDAR, the best we think, right? But you guys know the land better than we do. So a lot of times at the hearing, we're going to refine these a little bit. My thought a little bit is on 30, yeah, we could take, we would look at that as viewers, maybe make that recommendation to the board. But we need to know from the landowner exactly where that is. Okay? Um, the other thing was at that landowner meeting, somebody had marked on there they thought the boundary should be where we show it right now. Now, we put it there because we didn't know the intention of the landowner, right? We didn't know what, the, maybe they want to try to tile it back. Maybe they feel they want to drain it back. But if at the hearing today we can come to some agreement, or maybe it's a situation where the board says we have to go back and take a look at it, and then make another recommendation, we could do that. <clears throat> right now, that's where we have that boundary set. So we're looking at, at your input. Now, there's been comments earlier, and, I, and we just had a comment that some people feel that we should extend that boundary all the way to the north. Okay. But I'm going to tell you why the viewers felt we shouldn't have put it all the way up. There's several reasons for it. Okay. Maybe, maybe one way is give you a little demonstration. Would that work? Please. Please. Okay. Give you. <coughs> and maybe. Kind of a new one for us today, guys. This is kind of a new deal. <laughs> <laughs> Take it right in the middle, that thing. Okay. Okay, so we thought we'd do this. Good this luck. came up, right? Okay. This came up. And I could show you PowerPoints and I could show you <coughs> elevations all day long, but I want to show it to you this way, right? We looked at the elevation, and where's the common place to look at your elevation? It's on the on the mile lines, right, the roads. We looked at the mile lines, and like I mentioned before, on the west side of 30, that was flat. But when we get into 29, it's similar 28 as it is in 27 going east. All at the, in the road ditch, on every one of those miles, the average amount of drop to the north is two to two and a half feet, right? So if we're at level right now, okay, level, Roger, you dropped two, two feet, two and a half. We got that much slope going north right now in the road ditch, right? What we looked at is if the person in that half mile to the north has to drain that water back south, we got our engineers here, how much grade do they need to go? Say, so what's the uh, flat? Right ditch? now you got seven feet of back. You got much more benefit. You got no, I'm not talking about how deep the ditches, because it doesn't matter. The normal grade for age range is what, about an 05? So in a mile, that's how many feet drop. We can't get 05 in there because there's only, a, from, from our total maps, there, 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 there's not more than two feet in a mile. It's a .01. Okay, so the drop to the north in the road ditch, and I can show you on the LIDAR, is two to two and a half feet north in the road ditch right now. If we're gonna drain that back, if we're two and a half feet, of drop to the north, oops, <laughs> that will get this figured out. Two and a half feet, there's a level. Two and a half feet of drop or two feet of drop is an 05 grade. That's going to put us at a ditch that's, that, that ditch from the existing ditch bottom that you got to the south, you're going to have to dig a ditch four and a half feet deep. So then answer my question, when I said my water goes a mile to the west and a mile to the north, in the way it sits right now, my water can't go there anymore. So why is there not a benefit to ditch to? So where's your land? Where's section? It's 32. 32? The northwest corner. <coughs> 30. The problem is you don't farm the roads in ditches, though. You got to the land. 30. Tabor. And I'm, I'm for this. I'm 100% for this. You're on the south side. Yeah, I'm going to start this thing. My water drains a mile to the west and a mile to the north to ditch to. My water can't go there anymore because okay. he's putting the trap there. 
Okay. So the deal is, to me, there has to be a benefit all the way to ditch two. Okay, here's our point on ditch two. You're saying there should be a protection benefit to two, correct? Well, my water isn't going there, so okay. why shouldn't ditch two, Why shouldn't there be a some kind of benefit to okay, ditch right two? But show them, show them why. Okay. There's, there's a, you can show <laughs> so, me all the string action you want in the world, guy. Right? Well, here, but the deal is the reason, there's a trap there. They can't go north anymore. Here's the reason why there's not a production benefit going to the north. Remember we talked about there's a two and a half foot fall to the north? Yep. Okay, drop down two feet. So even even if ditch two is is to the south and that water can go north, we heard all the discussion earlier about <coughs> ditch two breaks out. You've got your local drainage that can't get into two. Unless they can drain it back to the south, that water is still going to sit there because at the half mile line, there's a foot of drop. Whether that crop is under a foot of water or under two feet of water, it ain't going to make any difference. But you're not listening. You're not understanding what I'm trying to ask. It's Now it's going to be trapped. It can't go north like it has gone for probably 100 years. <clears throat> Why is there not a benefit to ditch two? Why isn't there a benefit the whole way? My water is no longer going to go a mile north. So them people along Ditch 2 are able to get their water in quicker to Ditch 2 because my water is not coming there. Okay, so the reason they're not going to have a benefit from a protection is because normally protection benefits, they're talking about if you have an impoundment, right? And your land was flooded and you shut that gate off, the water no longer crosses your property it eliminates the water in your property. So you receive a protection benefit from that. But if the land slope is already to the north, and that, and just because you cut it off, the amount of slope that you have, like at the half mile, still allows water to pond because ditch two is not gonna let it in. So how can you justify a real protection benefit to that property you know, and that's how we looked at it. So I've got the answers that No, it doesn't at all. Okay. I, think, I, I, Mark, I think Mark had his hand up first here. Yeah. Okay. I, I tend to agree, uh, agree. Mark Holy, section 35 and 31. I agree with you and I your cute presentation is, is valid. Your points on elevation of the farmland is valid. The problem is I asked a question earlier, do we know the bottom of the culverts? in this project in relation to the bottom of the culverts in ditch two. The comment was no. That is the problem because in the corner of 26, there is a five foot culvert, but the top of that culvert is approximately three feet above grade in that corner. <clears throat> Therefore, when that culvert is full and back flowing, when ditch two is full, as I said before, the water flows south, and it will overrun the roads and <coughs> fills up Section 35 two miles south at full capacity. I agree with your presentation on a 50% full uh, ditch on Ditch 2. Your scenario and your assessment, we'll call this the uh, good rainfall assessment. I would care to bet in the disasters what we're talking about, as I mentioned before, when we have a one-inch rain or a beautiful two-inch rain in this corridor, and the water comes from the east, it floods us out, and it's going to continue to flood us out in this area. People, we've heard the presentation, there's going to be more culverts coming from the north into this ditch. I'm, I'm, oppo I'm, I'm opposed to this assessment map. I think the green line should be moved up to the uh, half-section line. And I think the, uh, what, stage three should go all the way to the big ditch. Because there are not 24 or 36 inch culverts coming out of, going into ditch two. They're all five foot and or bigger. That's the problem. The top of those grades on those culverts have not been calculated into the assessment area. Matter of fact, even with the design, that water flows south. Irregardless of spring flooding, I'm not even talking spring flooding. The water flows south even at 75% capacity of ditch two. <coughs> Thank so you. You, can, you can see the challenge there, right? So the, the point is when you look at uh, elevation data, 
there is a slope to the north, right? If you're going to drain it back, that's going to, if we're looking at a drainage benefit, those people that aren't in there right now <coughs> really ought to come in if they're willing to, to do the work to get it to go south. So that's one way to look at it. From a protection benefit standpoint, we didn't include it, and there's about three reasons, not just the one. The one is that because of the slope to the north, even if you cut the water off to the south and you get a rainfall and it can't get into, it's going to sit. We looked at that. Okay. The other thing we looked at was that Ditch 2 also has to have a benefited area. So where do you draw that boundary? I'm not saying that that boundary, like you mentioned, the green couldn't be moved up, and maybe even that, that last level could be pushed up a little further. That becomes more of a subjective thing, right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you one other thing that comes into play on it, and the reason we didn't do it. Because we did look at, too, in its benefits, and how they're going to be able to fund and maintain their system. And, oops, let's um, <coughs> do this. Okay. So we did this. We know that if there is any benefit to the north, which some people have made the argument for, that that benefit is not going to be the high rate. It may not be the low rate. It may be a different rate, right? I don't know. We didn't include it in there. But I went just and ran numbers on what if you just put it in? What if you put it in, right? What if you put it in at 50 bucks, a smaller rate? We got 2,000 acres that's included in that area that's not in right now. If you did 50, it's going to bring in $100,000 worth of benefits. And if we apply that then to your current benefits total and ran the same levy, the difference is going to be about, mm, on the highest one, 10 bucks an acre. If you amortize that over the 20 years, it's going to be about 50 cents an acre. Difference on your current assessment if everything was equal. Okay. So the one thing to keep in mind, it's not a big number because it's not in there. When we left it out, it was in our opinion that we had to draw the boundary somewhere between two and the new ditch. And our rationale was to those four reasons. Okay. Could it be different? Could it be changed some? Yeah, because everybody's human, right? You've got to set the line somewhere. Part of this line got set from the landowner meetings that we had. That's kind of where they felt it should be. So question is. Eric Larson, and I agree with Mark and Mike. We farm land in 31, 32, and 33 of Tabor. And like Mike said, it all hits 66 and goes north. And we have about 80 acres in section 25 in the northeast quarter. 80 acres. That, that water doesn't drain until those three sections kind of go by. And also the viewers report is false because when we met with the viewers in section 27, we have an 80 and 40. We asked to be in the we asked to be able to drain both ways. And you left us out. What section are section you? Section 27. What one? Section 27 of Northland. Of Northland? We, because that's a flat section there, that's where the coal wires and the big Point seven now. is flat. So you want to bring yours in on the north end? We want to be able to go both ways. Okay. If, you're, uh, if you're not in the colored area now, you can't bring water into this new ditch. Mm -hmm. And we want to have access if we we'll work with uh, John Barrett or something on the coal bar that could be So, so uh, if you left us off, how many others did you leave off? Well, I've got the map of the original land on what? There's there's uh, protection, you know, we argue with your strings and stuff, but all this water is going to be contained in these nine lower sections now. They're not going up north. And Jerry Pribble was pointing out the, the flow of the land, going northwest, and all those northern nine sections. There's got to be benefit all the way to Ditch 2. Yeah, and I think one thing to keep in mind here is these guys, it's a suggestion from them. The board ultimately has, after the hearing, which direction we go with this by hearing the testimony. 
So this is good that we're hearing this. So there's two people that get, uh, didn't get addressed. They addressed the project. One was uh, Shane, one was David Thompson. I think they'd like, I'd like to get them addressed on. You guys each had a question on first. Oh, even though I jumped the gun and asked it at the wrong time? Well, that's fine. <laughs> no, and I, yeah, David Thompson, uh, Northland, and I own that avenue that I could get really kind of snotty here because I own 240 acres right on County 21. So why am I seeing anything there? But I'm being part of the project, that's fine. But I still think that going all the way to ditch two is a protection benefit because they're not taking the water from the south. And we know, and you can go out there, instead of viewing all this stuff when it's dry out, go out there in a week and see which way this water is going. And still, don't depend on, I know numbers and formulas and all that sort of stuff, but sometimes actually seeing which way it goes is a better way to plan some of the stuff. And I think that's the benefit of having these hearings for that. I mean, there's nobody that knows better than the people that are living out there what all works, you know. Right. I think these are some guidelines that these have put together with some theory behind it that they're supporting. Well, what I, what I would say is that you got different conditions, right? When you got spring flooding, and the water gets high enough, it is going to go for wherever it's got the easiest problem. But that's still drainage. It's drainage. Yeah, yeah. That, that's still a benefit. If your water goes over this too and drains back, you're yeah. still a benefit. Right. What I'm just going to say is that based on the elevation, when the water drops, that last bit isn't going to go there. <coughs> so that's where we didn't include it. And if you dug that field and it filled it up and it could never go to the south, that field would never drain. It would take a long time to go to the south. If you want to watch, watch the spring flooding like David said in the next two weeks. When they have corn <coughs> right on ditch two, see where the corn stalks end up. There where this ditch is going to be. Well, I'll, I'll agree with that because you, you can see that on high water then it's going to take the easier route. But the benefit to improving the value, if it still doesn't take if, you, if your crop gets flooded with two feet of water or one foot, it doesn't make any difference. So if that last foot doesn't, if you're not protecting against that, just like the drainage project's going to do for the land that can have direct drainage in, you're going to be able to drain all your water. And I don't disagree with this ditch with the 10-year capacity. Nine out of 10 chances, it's going to take every drop. The only reason that we didn't include that top in is that last foot ain't going to go and ain't going to help you if you don't take it off. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. I'd like to have James. Uh, he had a, a viable question here with his property around that. Yeah, I guess I just would like to know what the, what the plan is with when my trees are ripped out, what they're going to do. Okay. When we look at damages, we just look at parting the land, right? So that's one of the board issues. But I guess you'd have to propose something back and see if they would be willing to do that. Because you do have a unique situation, right? No, I mean, my yard's the only one being ripped apart. Right. So I, I guess you have to kind of... And we do address some of them things individually because we all you know, maybe right. want our... Yeah. Right. And I, I guess as far as I'm concerned, and I at first I said we're going to off you this much or this much, and I don't care if it costs $15 or $20, it doesn't matter. All I'm asking for, I don't have the time to play with these trees. I don't have time to do that, that stuff. I would rather they plant the trees. If they can get by for $1,500, hey, Project's cheaper. I don't care. I, I just I don't have time to play with this. Yeah, that would be an issue. You talk to the board, create a proposal. Ours is based on land value. Okay, Mike. I got another question. This is a very simple question. Looking at that green map. So why do you think? Like, and I can't see the sections up there. I think Darren Nelson's got that. Why? Why is he being taxed three times down when the rest of it isn't? No, 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 And then on the north side, you say you can drain a half, you're, you're paying the high tax rate a half a mile for two and a half, two and a half sections, but the rest of it you can't. And that doesn't make, that makes like zero sense to me. If anything, the green line should go all the way across a half a mile, both north and south, because then it would at least, it, it, it would make some kind of sense. What you guys did here doesn't make any sense. Okay. Do you think the line should go there? Yeah. I mean, if you can drain in them two and a half sessions, if you can drain a half a mile north, and every farmer in here knows they can drain a half a mile south or north. So that green line should go all the way across. And the same thing on the bottom there. Why would you add another 40 acre, 40 acre shock or 80 acre shock? Why, why is he being penalized? 
Well, the, the only one. Yeah, the only one. That's why would you do a green line? I have three quarters of a mile, and he's the only one. I don't get because he owns the land all the way to the ditch. So what? That doesn't matter. Does that doesn't matter. Well, you're splitting the other ones. He doesn't have another property owner to go through, and he is, his difference in benefit is a hundred dollars between. That doesn't make. I don't care about the money. The problem is it's the way you got the colors. That doesn't make any sense. Why is he being benefit? Why is he being penalized because he owns three quarters of a mile? He's not being penalized. He's got more benefit because he can drain directly in. Maybe here, you landowners get So then, okay, then, you're, then wait a second. I'm going to stop you right there. So the guy north of me on 32 owns the whole corner. He can drain the whole corner down south, but he's only paying, he's got two different sections. So then explain that to me with your same logic. Which section are you talking about? Uh, north of 32 Tabor. 32 Tabor. The two guys that own the quarters north of me both own the whole quarter. Using your logic right there, basically you're saying he can drain, he can only drain 40 acres down at the high risk and then a shorter amount than the lower risk. At the lower he risk. It or he owns it? That's irrelevant. He farms or rents the whole quarter. Okay. The point is that when we look at the land ownership, we don't know who rents. Well, correct. Okay, but wait, no, wait, wait. Then go back to your analogy. When you're saying that guy's being better, he's got to pay more because he owns the whole mile. When the guy up north owns a whole half a mile, and he's not only being taxed on half of it? I can only tell, the, tell what we did and why we did it. We did it well, I'm it. trying to ask you why you did it that way. You're telling me on the one instance, you're saying he got the high benefit for the whole three quarters of a mile. But on the north side, where they own the whole quarter, they're not getting the same benefit because they own the whole quarter. You got to be specific on what section you're talking about. We did it on this section because he owns it all. And Any of the sections north of me. Section 28 of Tabor. Yeah. My uncle has that south east west quarter. They got green and the south 80 and the orange in the top 80. So like Mike said, that's the same scenario. It's a, yeah, it's the exact same scenario. Like and I, I talked to, Ra I talk to Rhonda, and they're going to drain that whole quarter south Listen. and the dish goes through. So that whole quarter should be green. Yeah, it could be. It okay. could be, but what, what, okay, we are sitting here, at the very, wait a second, I'm not done. We're sitting here at the very last part of this meeting. The problem with this, we sign a paper saying the engineer is going to build this dam right, and then you guys are going to assess it right. And we're at the end, here's what you're going to pay. It's like to me, you're going to build a brand new house. I'm just going to build it for you, and in the end you're just going to pay me, because you trust me. I trust you to do this right. I trust him to build the ditch right. So change this and do this right. Yeah. Okay. David, I'll question. Why does land ownership play in it? Land should be land. Why does it matter if the guy farming it actually owns it or he's renting it? Land is land. Water goes where it's going to go. Ownership doesn't mean a hill of beans. The difference was that if they have to do the improvements to get it to the ditch, they have to cross another owner. And you just can't go on another owner's property without getting that submission. Go to the township ditch. Go to the top. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I think one thing we want to bear in mind here before we start attacking Jerry too bad is he's here to present his findings, whether we agree with him or not, but basically the findings come to the board with the testimony on the people. I think we're getting a pretty clear view of what they're thinking, so I mean, bear that in mind. They're doing their job with coming up with what they feel is a reasonable assumption to this. Uh, so I mean, we want to try to keep it somewhat in line here without... You know, and I, I get you guys don't get it, and he kind of gets why he don't know why you don't get it. But <laughs> we're trying to. Uh, well, we got this, we got I have a question there. I've been asked for a long time here. I'm going to speak my piece. I'm Robert Peterson. We're in section 30, northwest one quarter. Our drainage goes to the north to ditch two. We've also got the 220 highway ditch there. I don't see an art. The, the further you go to the East, the more argument there's going to be, and I'm not getting an argument with anybody's water problems or why. I'm talking about where we are. I don't feel it's a benefit, and I want to go on record that I disagree with being assessed in that quarter at all. You're in 30, Robert? 30. <coughs> Northwest one quarter of 30. There's a gentleman behind here that hasn't got a chance to speak. Sir. Yeah. Darren Larson, I own the land in section 34. So I just want to be on record. Many people have already stated that the green, my uh, south quarter there, that's being assessed at the higher rate than anybody else in the 
full nine mile stretch. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm the only one. Okay. Oh. Fix up and sort Can you address that, Jerry? We got it. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense. Okay. 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 I, I understand. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Bob. Look, I'm, I'm not paying taxes on this. Well, I think we got. Yeah, I'm a new. But I do want to say something as long as there is, is, is protection. You know, I, I pay protection on some land that I farm. And if I'm paying protection for another good system, I think it's too high. But, but if I'm paying in a ditch that we're building or that, you know, the regular ditch, per se, and I'm protecting somebody to the north, it's not enough. You follow me? You know? Well, I, I believe that there is a protection, and I do believe, too, as a ditch that, of any ditch in the county that needs protection, that's one of them. So that's where I'm at in this thing. Sure. Uh, Brian? Uh, up on uh, ditch two, it's either Jerry's question. Do we know what the capacity of that system is? Is it a ten year, five year, two year? No, I don't know. I would you know, I could only guess, but the, the, the drainage area of two and sixty six, it's probably on the order of monthly. Uh, two <laughs> two year maybe. Two year. Then then one more question I have as it relates to two. Is there herbs on either side or both sides, one side? You know, spoil banks, or uh, I'll refer to them as birds. Ditch two has a very high road on on on, uh, on the north side. North side, and um, the spoil is lower than the road by um, by policy. Okay. So there are places where probably that um, historically two overflows because it's in probably a, about halfway in between or somewhere, and in the past it's. Um, you know, it's um, the, the the drainage area of two is really not two. It's 66 plus two. It's huge. Yeah, sure. And um, and right now, if this ditch isn't built, these 18 square miles are in that are, are adding to that. Yeah. All right. So, so there's, 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 whatever, right So one last question. And going back to this gentleman's in the corner here, where he's looking at the relationship of the the culverts. Did I understand you to say that the, the culvert on two up north, when it's flowing full, it's at the top of a uh, the culvert there, which is three feet higher than that to the south? Did I understand that right? In section 25 in the northwest corner, the top of the five foot culvert is approximately two and a half feet higher than the natural grade in that area. And you've seen it flow to the height I've of seen that? it. Everybody from, <coughs> from, from that section going right. east over towards Mike's area, we see it continually on heavy rain events where the water flows south. Okay. What he's saying is for that color to flow full, you have to have three feet of water sitting on your field. No, if, if ditch two comes up too fast, it will flow backwards. We have five foot the culvert. The five foot, the top is five feet above the grade. Yes. So in order for that culvert to be effective, it has to flow full, <coughs> and you'd have to have three feet of water on your farm. Yes. It, there you go. Yeah. I, is, is there anybody? I think we've got the drift of kind of the general feel for everybody. But is there anybody out there that maybe hasn't got a chance to say something they'd like to? I, I think that uh, with that public comment, I, Kevin? One more thing, just on our active. Uh, on Brennan Johnson's, where his house is, and Jerry said that it's coming to the trees almost. There's an L piece there that I used to farm, I won't really have access to it. Uh, that maybe compensated for that, or if you need some place to put a bunch of dirt or whatever. I don't know. The farm, yeah, the farm. Twenty-yard football field, no. So I mean, it's gonna be no good if a guy wanted to square off the whole thing. Or, 
Something. Is that more, more with the construction you mean? Or? Yeah. And I'm jeering myself about it. That'd be somewhat of a moving target, I would think, as a project for seeing it Okay. We have all these lines out there for where the water is supposed to go and everything, but right at 220, when you go south on 220 where it ends there, where the ditch is going to cross, there is a culvert diagonal going underneath Highway 220 already that takes water in an overflow situation to flow that way. Right, Jerry? Jerry, you want to pay attention? That covers about an 8.15 elevation that goes under 220 diagonally for its peaks. Right? That's right. And that's, that's nothing's going to change with that culvert. That culvert stays. The, the, the one that's in there the now. DLT yeah, box. yeah, that one that's in there now, but it, historically it, it's, on, it's dysfunctional because they keep trying to dig the highway ditch down, and it, 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 when that culvert was put in, there was a battle of landowners. The guy to the west yep. didn't want an east-west culvert. <coughs> so, you know, what I would say, <coughs> you know, flat is flat. I think you pick any one of these sections, and I can show you any place on any quarter that is lower than the high point on any other section. So what it is, you, you just got a bathtub. And I don't particularly agree that, um, I think if I own that, a lot the land along the south, uh, just to the north of the ditch, I would turn that water around and I'd make a drain to it. And I, I wouldn't have to, and then the only thing I would worry about is ditch two overflowing. And it is not the string theory. It isn't that much difference. Right now, you got the ditch going the wrong way, and if you'd have dug it, if you wouldn't have dug it, it was then flat. So then your string is only two feet across. And you're taking, well, it's going this way, now we gotta go that way, it's three feet. It, is, it isn't four feet. If the ditch was flat, and the ditch was built because the road was flat, <coughs> It isn't, it, it, it's not that hard to get water to go south. So, so my, question, my question would be, why didn't the drainage system put laterals in to go all the way up to two and drain itself? It was 1919. No, I mean now, the new ditch. Why don't we dig laterals going all the way south and north? And because, benefit. Well, because we have different degrees of benefit, and that's to compensate for you getting your water there. In other words, if if Dave wants to get water that's in the brown area um, along a, a mile south, he has to dig a ditch and work in cooperation with his neighbor to do it. So that's why he's getting paid, that's why he's paying less. Because he has to spend some money to get the same degree of service. But I, I disagree with, the ditch is a benefit to the land, not to any individual landowner. I don't care who owns what land. We, we shouldn't even consider who owns land when you take benefit because I'm going to guarantee you everybody in this room is going to die and that land will still be there and what we're doing today will be a benefit to the land. Somebody's still got to pay for it, Jerry. And, you, and, and that's right. Why should people be paying for ditch in the worry that we should worry about who's going to pay to fix ditch too? <coughs> We're going all the way to the Tabor Road, if you look at it. I mean, that's not a valid argument why we, we shouldn't assess those people because they're looking at an assessment coming later. It's not valid. I don't think, I shouldn't be uh, so adamant, but I'm very passionate. I think the project needs to be, I wouldn't, I just say that. Yeah, I, my, <clears throat> oh, um, you know, I hear a lot of talk about high-end water. You know, and, and really is high end water and spring flooding really much of a benefit to any of us that are producing crops. You know, it's a pretty bad situation. There isn't going to be much better thing. You know, we need to look at the benefited areas by normal rainfall or these events, these bigger events that can actually benefit the land. And uh, that's where I think the assessment should be drawn, you know. Otherwise, we should be looking at benefited areas before we put it to a vote whether we want to build a ditch or not. Because then everybody knows if you're part of that or not. And that would be pretty dicey, I think. 
and maybe some people are having some changes in their opinions of whether they wanted the ditch in the first place. We started looking at it this way. I'm, I tell you, I, if somebody can prove to me that that uh, I deserve to pay into something, I'm the first one in line. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but like in my situation, and you already alluded to it, when we're up against Iowa 2, we're already paying a pretty steep assessment into two. You know, probably more so than some of the other properties that are now being assessed on this project. And I know for a fact on those two quarters of mine, you know, the water all goes north and I could not get it to go south. And I have photos to prove that in these last couple of events, the last five, six years, to where the water sits on those sections. And I agree with you 100%. If I was on the south half, I'd be bringing that water all back into that ditch. Because it can be done. But top end water goes everywhere. And you can't judge your benefits based on, I mean, I've seen the goofiest things from year to year. You just don't know where it's going to go. Can I just make one more comment, Mike? So when you guys, this was about uh, 10 years ago, you built a ditch in Sullivan Township. And you two guys were on the assessment roll, as far as I know. You guys went a half a mile on the high side and three quarters of a mile on the low side, just about the whole way. And then you dropped it down to the next drop, the next way. Why would you do that? So when I signed off on this, knowing this is going to be a watershed ditch, thinking it's going to be somewhat similar to what you guys done in the past. So why would you do this here and then totally kind of change your mind there? Well, every ditch is different, right? So I, uh, I'd have to go is, back. This is all flat. I'd have, to, I'd have to go back and look at what we did on that one. Uh, that was how many years ago? Um, no, each, the land hasn't changed. But, but each ditch system is going to dictate how the benefits could be coming. And the, and the design of the system, this is a 10 year design system. You know, but like what I told you before, as we stepped down, we went 450, 350, it would have been 250, but they have a dual benefit on that ditch to the south. Right, but to the north, you went to high end on this ditch, the whole half mile. Could have been. Well, you did. I mean, it's right here on paper. I took it, right. I took it off your internet site. Right. So uh, why didn't you do that here? <clears throat> and then you have no benefit over a half a mile. And you did this here in the whole mile, just about the whole way you went the next step. Like I said, we have to go look at and the I, ditch. And I, I think we... We don't want to get this to be a personal deal. I mean, we, we, yeah. they provided the information. It's something. The process of this is to bring this to the board. They're not here to say this is what it's set in stone. If the board chooses to take Jerry's advice, their advice, amend it, look into different situations, that's what we'll do. I mean, this is the process of this. Mark? Uh, just a couple of last comments. Uh, one, I'd like to uh, publicly uh, give my name on record as stating that the analogy that's been used for the assessment area for this particular project, that the if and when ditch two goes, whatever project would happen to go there, that the same analogy on the benefited areas are used for any future ditch two situations. I think uh, publicly going to state that uh, that situation. Uh, second point, uh, just for education purposes. I was chairman of the engineering committee on the city of East Grand Forks for seven, or six years, excuse me. We designed a project, got the project cost, uh, went to the taxation district, got the uh, assessment role put in place, neighborhood got to vote on the project based on what their individual properties. In this situation, it seems like we're, we petition based on what we think as landowners. The construction costs come in, construction goes ahead and then all of a sudden the last wagon of the tail if you would with the dog is the assessment area is put out which is somewhat different than what we were all led to believe was going to happen who dictates that process uh, is that the state of minnesota through uh what, what's it called uh, the state yeah, statute. The minnesota statute 103 doesn't allow i mean the watershed district you know to go look around at all the ditches and don't function properly and then uh, let's get a probable cost of all these systems to see what it would cost to improve because first of all we have no mechanism in place to pay for that um so the statute requires a petition first yeah. I peti and the petition now uh, is that you know, like you build a new ditch or improve a old county ditch um, goes to the watershed district, and then the statute is set 
it's just a, like a checklist that you have to go and check each box on statutory requirements to get to where we are today. So it's strictly 103E, Minnesota Statute 103E that really dictates the pattern of which you get a legal drainage system. Yes, and, I, and I respect that, but I, th I think we've wasted a lot of board time, a lot of our time, if the process was a little bit different that the assessment area could be determined earlier in the project and everybody on board that this is going to be the assessment roll come hell or high water. The process would be much more uniform and a much easier way to go through. End of my point. Yeah, right. and I think a certain amount of when Jerry does his presentation, he's doing a kind of a guesstimation on these assessed and benefited, you know. And as a rule, most of these are pretty close with the viewers and the engineers. I mean, as you know, I mean, they're just they're normally it's very close, but there's different view here on how they do it, and they're hired to do their job and not to do it the way Jerry wants to, you know. So in the preliminary report, it really gets to kind of not a, not a, on a per acre parcel cost, um, but the preliminary engineer's report gives a probable cost. So that's the first hearing, and at that time, petitioner can say, "Oh, holy man, that's too expensive. Let's quit." Um, and you have very little cost involved with that. Um, and that's, and, and, and you know, Jerry mentioned he's not to, in the, you know, the engineer's job is not to figure out the benefited area, it's the affected area, and there's a difference. Um, but, so but the affected area. preliminary with an estimation. Yep. yep, so the preliminary engineer's report does kind of give you a cost on a per acre basis, but it, unfortunately for the engineer, is they don't, they're not getting paid to do the benefiting. You know the, the, the viewing of it. So. Are we are we really off much from what the preliminary engineer, what Jerry's presented? Well, I don't think we're off any different than what the presentation was then. Uh, as far as the cost. No, the cost is uh, right. So um, one one thing I mentioned, and I agree with the what you're saying from the standpoint that when we set when we set the boundary, <laughs> this green could have went to a half mile, right? Okay. Yeah. When we brought to here, when we brought it this way, because when we had the landowner meetings. They set the outer boundary on that line there. Well, like, but well, wait, this way, let me think. So when we set it, okay, we could have shifted that up and down a little bit, right? But we brought it this way because when we had the landowner meetings. The other thing is, landowner meetings had us push the boundary up here, and we set it that way for the hearing, and we added this into 30 because, like I mentioned before, because of the road ditch. Knowing that there may be some discussion on those three items, right? My point is, is that some of this in this area, if I looked at it, if we were going to just set it without the hearing, we probably would have set that right on the half mile. How many people showed up to the hearing? Here's the thing. When we sent out the hearing, people were given the option to come to that land, not a hearing, but it was a landowner meeting, or to be able to call the viewers or set up appointments with the viewers. Nine we, that came. Nine that came. And we can totally, the one thing that folks need to realize is that those meetings are critically important if you have input on the dish, because that goes into the final findings. Have you ever done that here? Is that the first time there's ever been? We do it on every dish. Not at hearing, it's land on the meetings. And the drainage authority will send those notices out. Every system we do it. Okay? So everybody should have got that notice. <coughs> so all I'm saying is that I'm explaining to you what we did and how we did it and the rationale behind it. At the hearing, like I said, the board takes that input, and based on maybe folks that didn't go to the landowner <coughs> or didn't have their input, now is your chance to have that input. Mm -hmm. And the board can make changes. Because right now, it's a preliminary report submitted. Okay. Jerry? The landowner yeah, meeting. Jerry. <laughs> I, I tried to set up the landowner meeting, and, and, you know, so, but it's like going into a confessional, because it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I have no problem saying what I think, but if you had a landowner meeting and everybody was there, you would get just as much people saying what they are today as you heard from the nine. So I don't think it should be a one-on-one, -on -one because everybody that's going to show up is going to say, I don't like the ditch, I don't want it, I want to get out of it. But you don't get anybody that is, you got one guy that came to it, and he said he wanted the ditch, and he got green. <laughs> well, the one thing is when you go to that meeting, though, know, it's more than whether you want the ditch or you don't. Then you should have the engineer sitting next to you. It to should. It, it's for the landowner to provide their input on issues that they have, 
surrounding the ditch, the boundary. And here's the other thing. It's, it is a one-on-one, -on -one, so that we don't have situations where some people come to a public meeting and they don't feel comfortable that they can talk about it, right? So it is a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's also the option for the landowner, if you can't make that meeting, to be able to set up individual plans, right? So I guess all I'm saying is that from the viewer standpoint, we've made an effort to get your input. We tried to, in our findings, include that input in the final report. Yeah. And we provide the rationale why we said so. Okay. And I think part of the rationale here, Jerry's from the area. I've got a pretty good handle on the people in the area. That's why they chose him for the engineer on the petition. You know, so I mean, so eventually, Bob, did you have comments? I do. I actually, this is more for the board. When, when you sit down to look at your benefited area. Now, when you look at benefited area, if you are not in the benefited area, you're not allowed to drain into that system. And that includes high water, low water, at no time can your water go into that system. So if that water is coming over ditch two, and it's going to that system, it is still in the benefited area. Otherwise, you have to block that off from being drained. I'm going to let it matter. You can't wait down. <laughs> yeah, that, you're, you're right in some sense. You do not design any ditch for a flood, period. You design a ditch for a 10-year frequency. Right. So what you're talking about is a flood. All bets are off when you have a flood. Water. No, not, not necessarily. I'm, I'm just saying under ditch law. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just no, saying under. Talking the heavy rains to the to the east. Um, yeah. But if it's and going over, start. if it's going over ditch, it's county ditch two, and you and you say that that's a flood. Well, it's still draining off of there. All I'm saying is under a statutory, under 103 e or any ditch law. Maybe a better question is: Are you going to go on the? If you leave this the way it is, are you going to go on the township roads? and plug all the ditches okay, now that's that point. Point. That's where I agree with Bob. So what is a nightmare for any drainage authority, ditch authority, is that when you have an area that could drain either way, like we know it could happen in this case, the managing that is a nightmare. Because over time, someone's going to decide which way their, bed, their water can go the best. And then they're going to make it go that way, because that's just what I would do. So for us, to have to manage that someone in, I'll just use this example right here. We can't have a drop of water under a one inch or a two inch rainfall event or any event other than a flood event go this way. How about the guys that Remember, how you that's our, so the tile, <laughs> would be, the that. tile, the tiling, when we, they apply for a tile permit from us, we would clearly look at where they're paying benefits and they can only tile it to two. They can't tile it south. Well, like a petition. Unless they petition into the system. How about the guys that are part green, part brown? They're able to uh, tile the whole thing then, or is yes. there a different? They have, they have drainage right because they can, for tiling, they can still get their water, their, their subsurface, to go wherever they want if they're paying into benefit. But of course, Jerry, let's let Jerry get I think what he's talking, and Brian asked the best question of all today what's the design of two? You can expect two to overflow five times the amount of this new ditch and you're going to get you're going to get water five times that you shouldn't get in a 10-year period because and so you're right just because you say it shouldn't it doesn't mean it won't and and two is two and it isn't you aren't going to stop and say it isn't going to overflow just because it should I'm doing and that was a good question by Ryan I think that addressed it you're what talking about apples and oranges. Right. So what am I going to do with that? You know, I mean, that's not... Because what you're now... Hey, guys, can we... Then you benefit everyone. That's in two. The chatter back there, out of respect for the guys here. Here. Just to make note that uh, in Section 27, Lake Myron is pointing to our land. We asked to be included, and we're not. Mark. So we want to drain into the stitch. Okay, so I, I'm glad you... Because I wanted to make sure that... Specifically, yeah, they, got we, were, we were shocked when the thing came as we told them we want to have access and that we were excluded. So, uh, the, the, the only thing I wanted to add on, and maybe you guys can speak to this, um, when you were talking about tile, you have to have an assessment to that ditch or you can't bring that tile water to it. Now, I have some tile projects where I brought tile to a different ditch system, and you have to petition. To be included in that assessment. 
you can't just bring water to a ditch without already paying into it. Yeah. Section 20 right across the road. I asked Myron because I wanted to bring the 20, uh, the, it was a better ditch system too, to go into it. And I asked him, can I get an assessment? He said, I'm already paying assessment, even though none of my water really went into there. Uh, it was protection, and now we bring that, and we bring about 80 acres of the water off that quarter, which takes pressure off my neighbor to the north. Right, and that's what we're saying in this ditch. You know, if there was a protection they were paying, just like you're paying a protection on 20, you're paying <coughs> protection to 2, and that's what we feel you're, the stuff on the south side of ditch, ditch 2 is paying, should be paying to this ditch as a protection, and that's basically what we're getting out in this whole... I kind of, I kind of think we're getting kind of the same questions and getting the gist of everything right now. We've, we've ran many hearings, and Mike, you're right. I mean, in order to drain into a different assessment, we'd have to go through a hearing process similar to this here, to, in order to do something like that. But if there's no more burning desires, we're going to move on. Myron's dying to read that Bowser report. The no. no. DNR, whichever. <laughs> yeah, I think that we, we, I think that we, I think we've addressed everybody's concerns. I hope. This is another one of those statutory requirements. You don't think I like to read? I don't. So anyway, um, this is a advisory, final advisory report issued by the Minister of the Department of Natural Resources, and it's uh, directed to the Board of Managers. Dear Watershed District Managers, on behalf of the Commissioner of Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, I offer the following comments on the detailed engineer's report for the above cited project in accordance with Minnesota Section 103E301. Number one, the detailed engineer's report is approved, is approved as an acceptable plan to drain property affected. However, we ask for consideration on the following recommendations and its concerns and recommendations. The layout of the report was very easy to read and understand, and we appreciate the time and thoughtfulness put into the report. The detailed engineer's report covers many of the items concerned from our preliminary advisory report. However, DNR would like to make the following recommendations. Please continue to work with West Polk SWCD Wetland Conservation Act Administrator and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on completing the wetland delineation report in the project vicinity. This is a requirement on all projects that may impact wetlands. Using the NWI for identification of wetlands is a good starting point, but not, a re not to be relied on as the only source of information for identifying wetlands. Please continue to consult with the State Historical Preservation Office on determining if any potential cultural resources are in the vicinity of the project. Use uh, wildlife-friendly erosion control practices to avoid, avoid wildlife entanglement. Use as little herbicide, insecticide, fertilizers as possible in the management of this ditch. Pesticides may harm butterflies, and other pollinators, and can harm water quality. If there are any changes or work in public waters, the Red Lake Watershed District may need a public waters work permit, and any dewatering may need to be water appropriations permit. Thank you for your consideration on these comments. We look forward to continuing to work with the Red Lake Watershed District on this and other projects. For any questions or further details of our concerns, please contact area hydrologist Stephanie Clam. Goes on the state or number and uh, email address. Sincerely, Nathan Kester, Eco Water Resource Manager. That's it. For, oh, and then I do, I was supposed to also mention um, because we got three letters from landowners or correspondents um, relating to their concerns, I do want to mention their names for the record. Um, and they're in your packet, but I, for the record, I do want to state we uh, received a letter on March 20. It was dated March 27, 2019, and we received it on the 28th from Kenneth P. Lindgren, and his concerns were pretty much what was echoed here. Um, does not oppose. Uh, does not appear to oppose the ditch. He has to set that. I don't think in his letter, but he just uh, questioned the not having the benefits all the way to County Ditch too. We received a letter. And I talked to um, landowner Ron Johnson, and um, he stated, I totally support Ditch 16. This should have been done 20 years ago. I do feel the cost sharing should go to ditch number two or one mile north of the proposed Ditch 16. And he goes on to identify his, pro uh, his property at the number. Then I received a, uh, an email from Jared Hobart. Um, and I won't read it, but he pretty much echoed the same opinion um, that he feels that the water 
um, the, the benefits should go all the way to county ditch too. So that's, I just wanted to put those three in the record um, since they were sent to us and, and therefore no. And that's all I have. Well, I know, right? Very good question. What's the likelihood of school county doing something with two in the near future? I mean, wouldn't that solve a lot of the problems that we're referring to? So, so um, as any other ditch proceeding, it has to be generated by landowners that own the ditch. So Polk County's hands are only tied to maintain the ditch system that exists today. They aren't. They can't just go and improve it. But they need a petition. They need a petition from the landowners, just like this project. Yeah. Is that something that's under consideration? No. It's been talked about since I've been here. But it's, it's I, since I've I know one thing. In 22 years I've been here, you'll never. It'll never solve everything. We got to deal with no. what we're dealing with today. But aren't a lot of the people here right. know that would benefit from that being? That, that's an option, Daryl. We're up. Yeah, we're all being assessed for the whole two miles of ditch too. Yeah. So right now I'm I'm south of this new project. I'm being assessed on this, and I'm being assessed on ditch two. The whole two miles are being assessed. So if you remember a few years back, Polk County had had a survey sent out to a lot of landowners on, uh, in County Ditch 66 benefited area and two to ask if they should redetermine. I personally think it's a well, it's high time for County Ditch 2 to be redetermined because you guys have spent or are spending already money on all these other ditch systems and not utilizing two anymore like you would have in the past. Um, i just and 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 trigger a, a redetermination of benefits. Now that's a concern to some folks. Does not trigger handing the ditch system over to the watershed district. The county, by request of landowners or on their own behalf can redetermine benefits on any legal drainage system that they have under their jurisdiction. So, um, Mike's right, he's going to be paying, you're, you're still going to be paying taxes on County Ditch 2, even though you're built this, if you build this new ditch, you're still going to be paying on County Ditch 2 until the redetermination of benefits is completed on County Ditch 2, or any other ditch for that matter. Um, so just some of the benefited areas on 66, um, some of the benefits to the to um, and to some of these ditch systems go on the east side of 66, and until 66 is redetermined, that won't change either. Even if you built your new ditch um, west of 66, so we can talk about that yeah. all day. Well, I mean, you know, it's just, we got to address what the petition is before us. Yeah, it does pertain. I had a you know, question that Mark Foley brought up: if, if ditch two is decided to do something with that, would, would uh, this dish 16 pay protection? And which is a good question because, but or could you change the back of the area on, on this dish if dish 2 is being done? No, that's a simple thing. I don't know if you can do that. Well, and that kind of leads that what Jerry talked about, you know, where you could charge 250 to the north part, but then you have to leave some for, because some of that water might go north to two, so you have to leave some money left. You can't spend all the money on on, on the land all the way to the north, and now there's no more money if counties each two is improved, because they've already spent $450. My question is, can you change it back? No. <laughs> not, not without a redetermination of benefits on this ditch. You can redetermine benefits on this ditch. At that time, yeah. okay, so you can. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's another legal proceeding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think the and, and Dale made the point. I says, you know, we got to respond to it in today's terms. I can't guess on what's going to happen to two tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it was I think it was bringing more awareness to everything as we keep moving thing. in this area that people are probably seeing that there is a, a bigger need for a concern there. And maybe how to address it. Oh, I see the light. <laughs> Has Ditch 2 got money in their funds? I mean, are they doing anything with it? Or yeah. 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 We don't know that. No, that's, that's, that's a lead. Um, I, mean, I don't think the Ditch 2 is a problem with maintenance so much as the passing. They've been spending money down from FEMA to try and fix it. Any final questions? Other we're going to close the hearing here shortly if, if there's something that, that upon closing the hearing then the board will have discussion on what direction we want to go, whether we think the recommendation or if we want some more information brought forth. 
Are you going to do that in front of us so we know what's going on? Or? Oh, we like to do that. Yeah, we have that in high gear. This is all you're, on your dime. We've never, we've never did that. We might just, we might continue to another meeting if we don't have it. Well, know. well, people can still say something. I'm getting, I'm getting the feeling that just about everybody is for the ditch. Everybody, I mean, I've driven up in that country after that rain two years, and I can see something needs to be done just as a neutral observer. So. I think the biggest question, Gina, is, is to the north, the yeah. benefit an area. I think that's it what maybe that's what I'm hearing the more majority. That's what the calls I received. That's what it all was all about. And it was every everybody they called me was, and they were actually landowners up there, some of them that want to be included. Was there somebody to the north they want to be included? Yeah. yeah. I'll just say this if you don't mind me adding. You, you guys are worried about the protection from ditch 16 to ditch 2. If you go, yeah, you start adding more ditches, you start paying into more systems. We live in section 22, we pay protection from ditch 2, we pay drainage into ditch 6. You start crossing over. There's no, there's no definitive line. You're getting both from both ditches. You're not paying the same rate. You're talking a much smaller rate on a protection side than you are on a drainage side. That's not, that, nobody's saying that the people along ditch two should be paying what the green rate is paying. Because everyone who knows drainage knows that if you're next to the ditch, you are definitely getting a much bigger benefit. But you also have to look at the big picture that there is some small benefit, whether however you want to slice, you can say it's so minimal it doesn't matter, but it does matter. And I'd, I'd like to thank the viewers. I know this it gets to be kind of a tough job meeting with the landowners, coming back and discussing why you feel as strong as you did. I mean, that's, that's part of the process what we're here for. <coughs> Through that. So thank you guys. You guys did a lot of work with us. We respect your how you will come up with your analogy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, right, right, uh, I'm for the memory for the I, I'm for the ditch. I think you need the ditch. I'm a ditching person. I just asked the viewers and and, and and everybody here wants to, wants the ditch. Be fair. And the last ditch that come past my place. I didn't think the board was going to agree that they were. I, they did what they could, but I had the brunt of it. So just be fair and and uh, it's never be affected what they did. You're going to pay if you want change. It's going to cost. Because I think you guys worked hard to get where you are today. That's all I got. Anybody else have any final advice? Okay, at this time I'd like to close the hearing for Ditch 16, Project Number 177.